everyone, and welcome to another stream here on youtube.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini. I am Johnny Chiodini. I nearly said forward slash Johnny Chiodini. That's not my name. Um, but hi, uh, I, I hope you're all very well. Let's have another chilled hobby stream, um, because it's what we do on Mondays. Uh, and also, I've, you know, they're relaxing, and um, I've, got a, I've got a lot of, I have a lot of plastic to paint at the moment. Um, I recently picked up Warcry's uh, Red Harvest box which is the biggest box of terrain I've ever received. Um, uh, and, um, yeah, uh, I, I'm, I really need to get through it. So <clears throat> on, um, on the weekend, I primed a lot of the terrain, all of the terrain, in fact, with my airbrush. And then I uh, went back over it with, tell you what, let's go to the full cam. Ooh, um, it's slightly dark, isn't it? Oh, wait, hang on a minute. We'll fix that by bringing a lamp in. Uh, I then went over it uh, with a very dark brown, um, just thin wash with the, not wash, but um, thin coat with the um, with the old airbrush. And now we're getting on to that most exciting of parts of painting terrain. You can see this thing here is like, what's it called? I think it's a Varanite siphon. Um, it's a lot of wood. And we want it to look more colourful than this. So we're going to be doing a lot of dry brushing today, folks. Um, we're also going to be painting a lot of silver. So you've also got lots of uh, lots of these little bits. These sort of form like little pipes that you sort of connect as you make the terrain. Um, now, uh, these are two bits that I'm sort of... They're not done, but they're as done as I need them to be for now because what I'm going to do is paint all of this um, sort of silver and then I've got um, a rust wash, like it's from Dirty Dirty Down and oh my god the warnings on it are incredible, it's like use gloves, use eye protection, summon a priest, like it's, it sounds quite hardcore but apparently it's really good, I've never tried it but um, I'm basically going to get all of the terrain into this state with all of the silver and then I'm going to rust it up and then I'm going to pair it back. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and there we go. Will says, can you do the Lil Pipes voice again? Please go, the Lil Pipes! Um, also, I'm glad you're here because, um, <laughs> because, because let's talk about Warhammer lore, everybody. <laughs> um, basically, uh, as I mentioned, this is the sort of Aronite Cypher. Um, this stuff in these these tiaubs here is meant to be Varanite, which is basically, as far as I'm aware, like, uh, I mean, Mark Cohen is chanting God juice, God juice, God juice. Um, so it, it is kind of like a mystical, it's a realm stone, which is, um, um, you know, very powerful, which is why it is mined. So there's so, lots of it on the conveyor belt. And, uh, you know, in the, in the way... Um, it's it's painted up on the box like it's all red and glowy, like it's like magma or like a magma or like a molten hot coals, right? But stick with me on this because here comes another bit of terrain that we're going to be painting today. This fucking thing um, is basically a series of buckets that get winched sort of up, and then you can see here they go over, and then in here they go down, which is very very cool, right? Now. It's powered by a capstan here, which is driven round and round by people. But as you can hopefully see here, these people are very dead. These people have been dead for long enough, right, that they've turned into skeletons. Skeletons, ton 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 tons. Which makes me think that this whole Varanite operation with your Varanite siphon that goes drinks it up <laughs> in a very there will be blood kind of way. I I drink it up. Um, and then this whole thing which buckets it with the, with the dead people, it seems to me like all of this has been out of action for quite some time. This is where we're getting to the point, and this is where I need your help, um, because, right, presumably that's been sat there a long time as well. What happens to Varanite when it's just left for ages? Carl Moulton says, I never have a clue what any of these things are in these painting streams, but they're always cute or scary as fuck. <laughs> uh, right, so but basically my question is, like, would Varanite have gone inert in this period? Would it just be sort of like, would it have oxidised? Would it be sort of black like coal? Would it still be glowy? I don't know. 
We've got time to think about it, but I'm interested in your opinions. Uh, but in the meantime, um, it's time for lots of, uh, lots of, uh, I drink your god shake, says uh, the nice witch. Um, it's time to dry brush. So we've got four hours to think about this. So, so don't worry. You have a, you have a little think and we'll get over, we'll, we'll get round to that bit. But, um, a chartreuse goose says, is this a forewarning of Johnny's plans for all of us lovely skelly pa pals? I promise you, I will never make you work a capstan unless we do a Sea of Thieves community stream, stream and we need to bring up the uh, anchor. That's the only time. Um, Timothy Thomas has done a super chat saying, hello, Johnny. I just wanted to say it's my birthday today and I subscribed to your Patreon as a gift to myself. Uh, pet Watson for me. I will. She is not in the room right now. She is off cuddling with my wife because it is cold and thus the dog requires additional heat. But uh, I will as soon as I am uh, aware. Uh, aware? Around. <laughs> Hannah Axelson says so. It's powered by Skelectricity. Oh, that was hmm, an interesting joke. Um, Yasmin Warren says, Glowy sounds cool, but I know nothing about this. 3G says, I don't know either, but Glowy sounds about right for God stuff. Um, Lucy says, so how is Varanite when it's brand new? I feel like it's very, it is very glowy and like molten because, okay, we're, oh, we're really getting into this, aren't we? Hang on one sec, I'll get the box. Uh, uh, fucking hell. Okay, did I actually say happy birthday to Timothy Thomas or did I just read out the super chat? Happy birthday, Timothy Thomas. Anyway, right. Okay. Which way up is this? Okay, damn it, it's upside down. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Okay. This really is a big box of Warhammer. Right, you can see there, the focus isn't great, but you can see there the Varanite in the little, in the little pipes is very glowy. And also, right, hang on. You can see the board that comes with the game has sort of these fissures of, like, lava. So this is... That's what it's like when it's all fresh. And that's what Games Workshop reckons it looks like when it's been left in the sun for a while. But that just looks very orange to me. And the thing is, if I'm going to rust all of this metal up, then um, it's going to be very orange in hue anyway. So I don't know what to do with it. Um, Will says, Varanite is basically the realm stone of the eight points, right? Correct. So it's the will of Archaon made into a physical object. Does the Grand Marshal of the Apocalypse sound like someone who chills out in time? The Three-Eyed King, the World Razor, the Thirsting Predator, the Ever-Chosen of Chaos. Is he a man who goes off the boil after a sit-down and a cuppa? That's a good question. Okay. The No Switch says, what if it was pink? Where's it gone? Where's me? Where have I put my paints? What the fuck? Ah. I do have a fluorescent orange, which the, the lamp's not helping there. It's very fluorescent. Pink could really work. Anyway, right. I'm going to think about it. Carl Morton says, could go with more of an acidic yellow after a while. Yeah. That's a good point, actually. Um, right, we'll have some fun with it, but glowing seems to be the verdict, so that is good. Thank you, chat, because that has genuinely been on my mind for a week. Um, that one with the beard says, oh, hell yeah, make it pink. Uh, Emma Benton says, hello, friends. How are you doing this fine Monday? Um, yeah, hello. I realise we've been going for about 10 minutes, and not only have I not even picked up a brush until now, but um, I've not even checked in with you and said, hello, and how are you? There are 103 of you watching right now. Um, I'm very pleased to see you all. Um, I hope you're having a lovely Monday and that you're... Um, um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. A weekend. <laughs> was good. Goodness me. Alice Needham says, I want to be doing fun painting. I'm currently sorting some of my Greek myth illustrations to be part of an exhibition. Exciting, but a bit boring. That sounds great fun. I mean, it's very exciting that that is going on. Uh, I realise that obviously the admin involved may not be the most exciting, but still. Right, let's do dry brushing, because I very rarely do this these, time, uh, these days. But, um, dry brushing, it's very simple. Got some paint on a palette here, gonna just 
daub a good amount of it onto the brush like that and then we're going to get some kitchen towel and start basically wiping it off um, so now there's just a smudge of brown on this kitchen towel which I will use as an opportunity to refocus the camera there we go and it's kind of worked into the bristles hopefully you can see the sort of brown in there which means if you take a look at this planking we start to run that across uh, I don't know if it's even showing up. Uh, if you start to just very gently flick the brush over it, there we go, it starts to pick up the edges of the object. See how that skull is now like, hopefully you can just see the effect. Um, and it's a way of just picking up those raised bits. So all this planking with sort of the, the texture of it um, will start to Basically, it means that the raised stuff will be a lighter brown and the recessed stuff will remain a darker brown, uh, which is what we want, really. It's just a way of adding tonal variants into the model. So there we go. Sammy Joy says, I feel like there's this odd hyperactive energy emanating from the whole community today. I do not hate it. Yeah, I feel... It's probably coming across. Uh... The last few streams, actually, I feel like I've had a very strange hyper energy, uh, which is not normally me. There we go. That's some, some dry brushing on there. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it certainly keeps, keeps the energy up. But um, I think just everything is... Uh, I've got quite a lot going on at the minute, so everything's a little bit up in the air. Um... And uh, accordingly, I have sort of uh, lost lost it a little bit, I think. Will says, oh, that is some lovely wood. Well, thank you. Um, I don't know whether to do... I was thinking about doing a slightly lighter dry brush on the top of it with, um, I'm not even joking, pale sand, some cream. Um, but given there's so much terrain here, I don't know if it's actually worth doing like because i think really you look at uh, you look at this stuff it's the metal that sort of stands out more than the wood and i think once it's rusted it will look great especially once i've sort of pared it back a bit and done some highlighting so i kind of feel like i can get away with a more understated wood so um because i i have to admit i don't dry brush very much so i don't really like doing it um i find the technique quite boring um, it's satisfying when it works well, but when I'm painting miniatures now, I've removed it from sort of my list of techniques. I, I've started doing a lot more just layering and layering and layering, uh, than dry brushing. Um, but when it's good, it's good. I mean, like it, it is changing the look of that word. Like it's subtle, but you can sort of see that looks very different to that. Um, so yeah. <sighs> um, da, 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 da. There, there's the cream, says Beaver98. Drink. Uh, casual reminder to everybody, my pronouns are they, them, not he, him. Um, easy mistaker to maker. I'm very mask presenting. But that does not do anything to diminish my status as a non-binary person. So uh, if you could adjust your language accordingly, I would be grateful. Thank you. Uh, Neck of the Kitty says, I've been watching the Zoo Builder stream many times, and I hope we can go back to it at some point. I need animals on trampolines. The animals on trampolines are a real high point of that game, aren't they? And again, if you missed the stream, we played Let's Build a Zoo, and chat made all of the important decisions via polls in the chat. And uh, largely... Um, Largely, the decisions were moral. They were good. Chat, chat. Apart, we bought a couple of animals from a black market dealer, sure. But largely, chat was very good. So, well done, you lot. This is, this, not only does this stream have a very different energy in terms of me being ever so slightly hyperactive, but also it just looks like I'm stabbing the terrain. 
furiously. But that's okay. I am gonna, you know what? I am gonna start dry brushing some uh, some cream onto this. I think it'll work well. Um. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Emma Benton says I was shocked by how moral chat was. I know. Not only because chat, you know, is generally speaking. Uh, the realm of chaos, but also because we do talk about things that aren't exactly moral quite a lot, like cannibalism. And I fully admit that that's my um, uh, that's my doing. But Will says, Johnny, mate, circles, not jabs. It will keep you from having all the strokes in one direction. But they're such a good band, Will. All right, fine. Circles. Oh, that's more pleasant, actually. Oh, that works really well. Look at that. So I did see this as a technique. Uh, I remember Duncan Rhodes, praise be his name, Two Thin Coats, um, doing a video about how good circles were on flat bits of armour, which he picked up from one of the heavy metal painters. But I tried doing it on um, a Caradron frigate, and I hated the effect immediately, so I stopped doing it. But wow, that's effective. Yeah, turns out, oh wow, look at that. I've just had dry brushing completely revolutionized for me. Because that whole bit just got done mega fast. Emma Benton says, if I hadn't involved animals, I would have been more chaotic. But it's animals and I feel bad, lol. Yeah, that's fair. I think, I mean, just from the number of people who in the comments of the Dishonors 2 Let's Play were crying out for an episode of High Chaos. That doesn't overly surprise me. Ah, this is nice now. Do I like dry brushing? Still not really, but this is this is working really well. Oh, I honestly, I think that saved me so much time that now I'm not worried about doing a cream coat. Cream! Delightful. There we go. Wow. Um... Hmm. Just wondering whether to dry brush that bit brown and then do another bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll do we'll work on these two big bits at the same time today, but I won't delve into any other um what the fuck? That's amazing. I won't delve into any other bits of this terrain today. Uh cuz in 4 hours, I mean, I mean basically if we finish these we can, but um I won't do a batch bigger than that cuz uh it's nice to sort of stay focused. Look at look at the difference that's made in terms of the coverage. Circles. Wow. Every day is a school day. Even for me. 3G says, Johnny, next time you're at IRL, pick up some round-tipped makeup brushes. Makes dry brushing a dream. I am aware of people using makeup brushes. Um, I've never given it a go because I've basically I've got a, a medium dry brush that sort of... I, I dry brush so rarely that it kind of does for me. I'm all right with it, but... Um, I will bear the tip in mind next time I'm out in the chemist or something. Bit, oh, a bit more brown on the old palette. Cheerful Spider says, does Johnny have an airbrush? Yes, they do. Uh, I've got uh, an Iwata airbrush, which is really, really nice, actually. Um, I don't use it as often as often as I ought to. Uh, I use it for priming, and it's great. I primed all of this and sort of gave it a darker brown coat with my airbrush, and it, it made it so much faster. Um, and I, I've been trying to work on colour gradients, so uh, on the weekend, a friend gifted me a Skaven Blood Bowl team, because he had it going spare and was like, I'm never going to paint this. And I've decided that I'm going to paint it in the same colour scheme as the Jeeps from the first Jurassic Park. So the armour is going to have sort of like a, a lime green, almost like a moot green um, colour. And then toward the bottom of each piece, it's going to sort of gradient into a very strong yellow. And then there are going to be some like vibrant red bits on other parts of, uh, of the players. 
Um, and I think for that gradient, I really want it to be smooth. So I'm going to try and do it all with my airbrush and see what happens. So that'd be fun. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. So what did everyone get up to on the weekend? I actually played some Honest to Goodness Blood Bowl yesterday. I played a couple of games of sevens. Um, and it was fantastic. I played Vampires versus Halflings. And my Vampires got... It was one all draw, but my vampires got torn to shreds. I was left with two pieces left on the board. Or was it a draw, or did I lose? I think I drew. Yeah, it was a one all draw. But, wow. If it had gone on much longer, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to stop multiple halfling touchdowns. They're scary in sevens. Paolo says, thanks for the relaxing stream, watching this while working on a terrible spreadsheet. So many numbers. Oof. Courage, Paolo. I despise spreadsheets, even when they're spreadsheets for fun things. Not, I don't make spreadsheets for fun, but when they're spreadsheets that are meant for fun things. That mostly made sense. Sam Street says, painting our bedroom. Gloss painting is the worst. Oh, yeah. Beaver98 says, I met up with some friends for a housewarming party and went to a bar. Does that mean you didn't go to the party? Cheerful Spider got a boost of vaccine on Saturday and subsequently spent the entire... Oh, subsequently spent the entire remainder of the weekend. Very lucky and completely uneventful. Sounds great. Ah, Davy Jones has done a super sticker of a dog. It's a Shiba Inu. Uh, it's not just any Shiba Inu. It's a Shiba Inu that seems to be very adept at balancing on their hind legs. Um, this, of course, frees up their paws, uh, of which one... Oh, uh, uh, fuck! Knocked over the siphon, didn't I? My Varanite. No... Um, it's, it's holding its left paw under its chin, but the right one, it's kind of pumping in the air. And as it does so, it sort of like gives a little like, hey, a little cheer. And the text, how's it going, pops up. How's it going? How's it going? It's going great. Thank you, Davy Jones. Mostly. <laughs> That's a horrible lie. I've got a lot going on and it's a, it's a tough time right now. But, uh, we are surviving because it's what we do. Um, so yeah, all right, thanks, is the, uh, is the balanced answer there, isn't it? Doing all right. Surviving, not thriving, but even that's okay in this godforsaken day and age. Mm -mm -mm. At least with dry brushing, I don't have to worry about being incredibly neat with my brush strokes all the time. I mean, there's a lot of metal to then paint on this, but we'll burn that bridge when we come to it, won't we? Yeah, that looks all right. A little bit more. Amity Island Fishing Club says, Johnny, I asked before who you thought would win an Ox Venture Battle Royale. Has your answer changed? I can't remember who I said last time. Remind me, because probably not. It probably hasn't changed, but I want to be certain. Corvus Albright has done a, a super chat saying, Jaeger bomb. Jaeger bomb, I haiku you part dear. Jaeger bomb harder. Oh, hang on. Jaeger bomb, I haiku part dear. Jaeger bomb harder. Jaeger bomb, it said, can fuck you up in the head, but who can be sure? But who can be sure? Yeah, that's a successful haiku. Thank you very much, Corvus Albright. Uh, somebody offered me a Bucky Bomb yesterday, which is uh, Buckfast in a um, into my own brew beer. Uh, I declined um, because I didn't want to drink Buckfast at 9pm on a Sunday. But we had a watermelon pickleback instead, which is a shot of bourbon with some pickled watermelon juice, which was nice, but I prefer a normal pickleback. So that's, that's my um, exuberant sort of drink story for the month probably Jack Wood says Bucky Bombs are bad time juice I've not had a I've, I've had fun drinking them on a night before but Sundays it's just not quite 
Amity Island Fishing Club says, I don't want to tell you who you said because it will get you along that track again. If you answer, then I can tell you if it's changed. No, I'm not going to answer. Tell me and then I'll see if I agree with that. I want to remember. So there. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. All right. Wow, this has actually gone quite quickly. Dry brushing. Who knew? Okay, right. So, let's wash the dry brush quite thoroughly. Um, and then we'll switch to the blessed shade of pale sand. Minel says, late arrival. Let's go hyperspeed. See you in a bit. Good luck, Minel. I was about to make a joke about light speed skipping. But that whole thing was so embarrassing, wasn't it? The bloody rise of Skywalker just being a... Like, the first 20 minutes has been like, oh, At fucking, um... Rian Johnson. Zegar Chan says, let's be honest, the one and only answer is Jane. Alice Needham says, Buckfast and Old Rosie get very rowdy, very quickly drinks. I really like Old Rosie, actually. The last time he said it was Meryl then because of her brutality, meat grinder incident unaccounted for. But I think we're all underestimating it, but says Amity Island. Uh, yeah, no, it is still Meryl one. I, that, yeah. Um, aha, Jordan T says, hey Johnny, what does uh, dry brushing do for the piece? I will let you know as soon as I'm, I've, I've got some uh, pale sand on this brush and I'm ready to dry brush. But first, Mini Mootra has done a super chat saying, Hi Johnny, hope you're okay. I was always curious, where do you store all of these figurines? Uh-oh. Also, what is your advice for the starter pack for a person who wants to start painting figurines too? Okay, so, um, the answer to the first question is, you see those boxes up there with the blue handles? Those are plastic tubs and on the bottom, I have glued down um, magnetic sheeting. And on the underside oops, of my miniatures are magnets. So you just go and they stick down. These are some Blood Bowl minis I painted last year or early this year. A while ago, anyway. Um, and it means that they can be stored without having to be in like really big packs of foam, which takes up a lot of space. Uh, and it means you can organize them nicely and just pick out the ones you need and put them in like nice tins. Um, uh, like, uh, they're over there. I've got, uh, I'll get one, I'll show you. So, this is a tin. It's got a Blood Bowl team in it. You can turn it upside down, give it a little rattle. It's absolutely fine. Ta-da! Um, uh, and then, in terms of the basic starter pack for, um, for miniatures, I would say one of each of the primary colours. Um, a white, a black, and a grey paint. Definitely a shade, because... Uh, Putting a wash on your models really helps them look better. And then any colours you think are fun, because if you're excited to do uh, a, a, a paint with a colour, then you'll have more fun doing it. But to cover yourself off so you can sort of mix colours if you need to or want to, the primary colours are really good. Um, maybe I'd suggest like a flesh tone in there on, like maybe, but um, you don't need, you don't need loads of paints in order to paint uh, miniatures, I would say. Um, like, you can get so much mileage out of, say, one brown and then a white and black to make it lighter or darker or and then a wash changes how the model looks so you can go back in with the same colour. Um, Mabel Teacher says, I'm surprised you've not said cream. Well, of course, I mean, cream was implied. Obviously, everyone should get themselves pale sand from Vallejo. But, uh, oh, yeah, Jack Wood says gold and a silver. Metallics are good if you uh, you want to get into those, but... Generally speaking, like there's no hard and fast rule on how to how to paint. Um, it's just about experimenting with color and learning techniques that work for you. RV Dammit says bold ti bold titanium white. Darth Raven says uh, dark light side or dark side of the force. Um, I would probably say light side, just because the way the, the way the Sith are organized seems dumb to me. Um, sorry, 
I'm trying to remove that word from my vocabulary. It seems uh, silly. It seems ridiculous uh, because it's like, oh, there are always two. It's like, okay, well, what happens when they want to train up a third one? Do they need to find a fourth at the same time so that there are always two because two and two twos are four, but it's all right because they're organized into twos? Or does one Sith have to die? And just they're just kind of... I mean, the Jedi and the Sith are both kind of preachy, but they're just kind of like... They're kind of tedious with it. Did I ever tell you the tale of Darth Plagueis the Wise? <laughs> Carl Moulton says, but, but, do the Sith have dental? Well, exactly. Dental plan? Anakin needs braces! Uh, PSA, says Cheerful Spidey. This is a super chat. Uh... Chivals by the Super Chat reads, PSA, the primary colours are cyan, magenta, and yellow. If you try to mix from the wrong medieval system, red, blue, yellow, your colours will be muddy. There you go. So cyan, magenta, and yellow. Hmm. Ah, Darth Revan says, yes, we have dental. Oh, good. Okay. Did I ever tell you the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise? No, because it would have outed you as a Sith. The Nice Witch controversially says it's almost like everyone in Star Wars sucks apart from Jar Jar. So, anyway, right. Here we go. I was asked the question, what does dry brushing do for a model? Well, this is a good time to show you because I'm putting some pale sand on this brush and I'm largely wiping it off on some dry tissue um, so that it's worked into the bristles, but it's not like there's not loads of it on there. It's not a very wet brush. So instead, this is a dry brush. Now, if you look at this wood, you can see the texture there, or sort of like the grain of the wood is, is there. If I get this brush and lightly work it over the surface, you see how much of a difference that makes? It's almost too much, actually. Um, it starts to pick up the raised areas of the model and leave the recessed areas sort of dark so that the grain of the wood stands out more. You see that? So... This is now sort of, sort of starting to look like a very dry, sort of almost ashen wood, um, which is kind of what I want because this is a very sort of dry area because it's it's arid. It's uh, very hot. We can only assume from the molten varanite. Um, God, you need to slow down on this um, this here dry brushing. It's really picking out these details. But yeah, it's basically just a way of picking out the detail and uh, making it stand out a bit more. Um, and it's a very simple technique, but it's really effective and it's great for terrain. See, so see, so I've just hit this sort of panel here. Um, I've not done this one yet, but I'm about to. Um, so when you're doing big pieces like terrain, I just don't have time to go in and individually paint bits of this wood grain. So dry brushing enables me to get an effect in an easy and swift way, because now I'm just working the brush all over this side. You can cover a lot of area very quickly, get the effect you're after. I mean, that I, I really like how that looks. Um, and it's, it's, it's a piece of piss, basically. It is possible to overdo it, and I think I used to overdo it a lot, um, which is where, maybe why I stopped doing it so much, but it is an undeniably useful useful technique and that my pal is what dry brushing is i hope that comes in handy god if we really motor up on this maybe i could try the terrifying rust paint before the end of the stream i don't know because i don't actually know if i have eye protection i'm kind of taking that warning seriously because you only get one set of eyes unless you're tom cruise in minority report uh, and frankly, I don't want to be, because he has to eat that, that really grim sandwich, because he grabs the wrong thing out the fridge. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So there. That film was weird. The umbrella bit was good, though, wasn't it? Ooh, I'm a precog. Grab that umbrella. And then, oh, it's raining. Ha ha ha, we got away. Brilliant. Electrifying, really, isn't it? Do, 
Do, do, do, do. So, look, if you compare these two woods, you can really pick the grain out of one over the other. Uh, and I like how it looks, so success. That's that bit dry brushed. Ify has done a super chat saying, Hi Johnny, it's only been a week and a bit, but I've missed watching you live. Currently my brain is full of cotton wool, so this is lovely. I'm very glad to help, uh, especially since my brain has been quite full of cotton wool recently. So, um, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. What was I going to say? Everyone is still talking about what paints are good to start out with, which is good. Because uh, I am not an expert on these things. I have opinions, certainly. But so does everyone else. Okay, dry brushing. Darth Revan says, thanks for the stream, got to go. Uh, take care and be safe, good people. Take care, Darth. I'm sorry I said I, I wouldn't side with the Sith. I'm sure you're all a great bunch. Apart from the, you know, evil and stuff. But, you know, from your perspective, the Jedi are evil, so... Who am I to say? Dry brush. It's a dry brush. <laughs> Scott Perkins has um, done a super chat saying, as a blind person, please use eye protection if you are recommended to do so. Chances are it'll be fine, but if everyone could protect their beautiful eyes. A very good point. Yeah. Oh, shit. A friend of mine sent me a picture recently of um, his uh, protective goggles, goggles from work and like, a uh, blade on a machine had snapped and a chunk just went and got caught in the lens. And like, you see that and you're like, yeah, that you, that would have been it. Like, no question for that eye. So, yeah, protective eyewear is good and important. Like Scott says, thank you very much for the super chat, Scott. And for sharing. Is this an excessive dry brush? Meh, no, it's fine. <sighs> Peter Michigan says dry brush paint wood. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> dry brush paint wood. Good, good, good. Liked it, liked it, liked it. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. What's that bit done? This is going very well. Yeah, very swiftly. I might even, actually, go back over those last two bits we did and just do a little touch-up on the wood there because I didn't dry brush cream onto that. Why ever not, eh? Ta-da. You 
Nick Jeffries on the Super Chat saying, Hey, Johnny, just switched on after leaving the hospital. Myocardi myocardial scan this afternoon, then echocardiogram. No, myocardial scan this morning, then echocardiogram this afternoon. What have I missed? A uh, lot of dry brushing, Nick. Uh, incidentally, I hope all the scans came back uh, clean and good. Um, and I hope that you found all of the stickers from the echocardiogram because, wow, there's I always miss one. I've had two ECGs in my life. And um, I was... I felt like I was finding the little contact stickers for day, days afterwards. But, uh, yeah, I um, hope you're doing all right. But, yeah, we've just been dry brushing a lot of terrain, to be honest with you. Um, it's been going quite well. I've learned a new technique. Um, we've got some big bits of wood looking all nice. So sort of the next step is to start painting up the metal. Um, and also these little skeleton pals down here. I think I'll start with the other one first. So I'm going to clean off this dry brush. We'll come back to it later if we rattle through enough of this terrain to need to be working on more. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Grumble says, just had a potato that looked, uh, that either looked like a misshapen heart or a butt. Hmm. Emma Blast says, there are 10 to 12 stickers. I have had innumerable EKGs and I almost always miss the one on my left rib. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they really jam them on there, don't they? First time I had one was for a suspected broken rib. It turned out I'd just torn an intercostal muscle, which is still very painful, it turns out. But uh, they wanted to give me an echocardiogram anyway to make sure that I hadn't punctured my lung. Uh, I hadn't, but um, it was an injury I sustained doing karate, and we'd been doing a lot of groundwork, you know, like pulling each other to the floor. And, just... um, and so they were like, okay, take your shirt off. And I was a patchwork of bruises. And they were like, you do this for fun, do you? <laughs> I felt like I was getting a dressing down for um, to basically taking up their time and resources, uh, having voluntarily had the crap kicked out of me. So there we go. That's my ECG story, or EKG. Severus Darkmall says, Why did God give us four cheeks? Because he made an ass of the first two. <laughs> yep. Yep, I don't, I don't hate it. Okay, JW, aka Marvelous Jacket Man, is on a super chat saying, Just arrived, was making coffee. Better latte than never. How is everyone? Doing all right, thank you. Just uh, trying to track down my lead belcher, which is somewhere. Here it is. Yeah. Nick Jeffrey's done another super chat saying, For those concerned, they're preliminary scans. Um, good to know. Thank you, Je uh, Nick Jeffrey, for the super chat and for the reassuring words. Okay, let's paint silver. Lead Belcher properly smells like how I remember Citadel paints smelling as a kid. Very specifically. Alison Vassabar says, that's what everyone says when I tell them I do boxing. You like getting punched in the face? No one likes getting punched in the face, but getting punched in the face isn't the point of boxing. <laughs> you know? Like, quite the, quite the opposite, actually. Oh, wow. That was untidy already. We're off. I've painted these little handcuffs. I'm using a bigger brush than I normally do just so I can get through this a bit quicker because there is a lot of metal to do, not just on this miniature but on the others. Incidentally, this is the piece you've probably recognised it from the thumbnail for this stream. So where my head was is actually this slightly frightening sort of ram skull almost device, which we will be painting, wait for it, silver.
Silver Sword Ian says, rule number one of all martial arts, try not to get hit. Exactly. Exactly. Blocks are important. God, Convoy says, it's an uncanny likeness. Thank you. That's what I was going for. Actually, I feel like I've been on a good run with the cursed thumbnails recently, but today is just, meh, it didn't really sit with me that well. Maybe it's because it's a piece of terrain and not a recognisable, like, humanoid figure, but I felt like I was, it wasn't my best work today, so please forgive me for that. Lojo has done a super chat saying, this is a throwback, re throwback reference, but this is for the Dice Goblin Fund. <laughs> Thank you very much. I fully appreciate it. I um, I called somebody. It was like a maybe a ten year old girl. I called her a um, a dice gremlin recently, and she looked up while rifling through the bowl of dice I was giving away at a market stall, and went, "I'm a dice gremlin," and then kept grabbing dice. It was the end of the day, so I was like, "Take as many as you want," and then she ran off singing, "I love dice. Dice are beautiful," and I thought, you know what? The kids are all right. It was a good time. Ah, good. The nice, the nice witch says, don't worry, the thumbnail was just as upsetting as always. And Titan Uranus said something that I'm going to delete. Because... <laughs> Metal! So we're going to do the metal and then we've got some some skeletons to paint and a couple of skulls on here as well. And then we'll do the metal on the other one. And then... Hmm... I'm trying to think if I have eye protection in this flat. I don't think I do. So I think what we'll do is then just move on to other bits of terrain. Um, I promise you I will share the results of the rust uh, paint once I've given it a bash. But uh, I kind of need my eyes to do a whole a whole passel of things. B. Muzza says, we like the nice shiny clickety-clacks. Good, I'm glad. Thank you. The nice thing about knowing I'm just going to slap a really messy rust paint over the top of this is that I don't feel like I need to be mega neat in terms of the coverage. Obviously I'm still trying to only paint the bits that I want to be metal, but it's quite relaxing really knowing that it doesn't have to be perfect. Revolver Rock says, to be honest, if it's a protective gear job, the office desk might not be the optimum place to do it anyway. Very good point. Sega Genesis says, does the paint speak with a French accent? Well, it cost it cost six pounds, I think, so I don't know if that works out as a gold piece. One gold piece. Ah, oh, Burrito has done a super chat saying, Hi Johnny, how are you? Good to see you. Recently started Shining Pearl after 19 years away from Pokemon. Any thoughts on these releases? Take care. I think they're valid. I you know, I know some people are like, why are we getting sort of re-releases rather than um you know, just brand new games? But I think it means that they can keep up a, a a swifter release schedule for those who are really into Pokemon and rip through the games. Um, but also, like, they're good nostalgia for those who haven't played them, and it's a, it's a, a good new experience for those uh, who never played. So, suits me fine. I sort of... I'm a bit baffled by the people who get really riled up about them. Um, I know people are like, ooh, it's just Nintendo cashing in. It's like, well... Is it? 
I don't know. I just feel like they could they could probably calm down a little, just a little bit about the whole scenario. But uh, hey, that's me. Metal. I think this is going to come out quite nice, actually. Tom Williams says, today's been a rough return to work after a week off and some chill scenery crafting is an ideal tonic. I am very glad to be providing that tonic, not least because I find it to be the ideal tonic as well. Um, I'm also really looking forward to using this set and having it look, like, nice. Because I've got, I've got the first two Warcry boxes. Um, and the original terrain I painted with contrast paints very messily and like it looks okay but it's not it's not even really done uh, catacombs i worked a bit harder on and i did some fun stuff with like uh spray cans and gradients on that so it looks like fun sort of magma lit um terrain but in terms of the terrain for the game i wasn't that excited about it but red harvest is a really exciting box and I also just want it to look good, so it's been fun to get started on on it with sort of a, a simple colour scheme in mind, but one that I hope will be very effective. So it is all good, and I'm glad you're enjoying watching while I am enjoying painting. That's the kind of symbiotic relationship I can get behind. Is that the right word for it? Probably not. Uh, mutually beneficial arrangement? I don't know. Ta-da! Oh, that, that that thing is cool. I hadn't really noticed the detail before, but I like that a lot. Um, let's get some more paint on the palette. Ah. Oh. Kelly Lutz says, yay, my lunch break coordinated with the stream today. Very much needed this today. Well, I'm glad to be providing the surface. And I'm very, surface? Service. And I'm very glad you're here. Providing a surface is something very different. Um, yeah, glad you are here. Make yourself at home. Put your feet up, etc. Unless you'd be in trouble at work. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I'm glad I'm doing this. I very nearly changed tactic last minute to paint up a model that I'm planning to give to a friend as a gift for Christmas. Because um, uh, I'm sort of suddenly inspired to do it. But uh, then I thought, actually, like four hours cracking on with this terrain would be really good in terms of clearing my paint pile. Not least because Dungeon Bowl is uh, out next weekend and uh you best believe i'm picking that up because i can't help myself also it just sounds really fun dungeon bowl is basically blood bowl but you have to find the ball by by going through a dungeon um you've got to go you've got to go look in chests to find the ball so it's a very different very silly adaptation of a game i already love and i'm excited about it as are my friends because again, we're nearing the end of our first league season. I have finally been eliminated. I got knocked out in the semi-finals. I'm not through to the final, but that is fine. It was close, but I believe the, the right team won. And the right team was not mine. Let 
can go. Metal. I'm really pleased to be doing this one first, because I'm not going to lie, I'm not looking forward to painting the buckets on this one. I think they're going to be a pain in the arse, actually. Will says, painting the buckets, dry brush those wee suckers. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, suppose, I mean, this, this rust paint really is, like, heavy coverage, so I could probably get away with it. But... I'll see. I'll see. I'll give it some thought, any road. We've got a ways before we get to that bit, so that's nice. <sighs> so much metal. Oh, didn't do that bit, did I? Silly. Grumble says, oop, kale is boiling. Let's get that down to a simmer lest it burns. Everyone making progress? How is your kale coming along, chat? I do like kale a lot. It is good. I prefer spinach, but I certainly wouldn't kick kale out of my kitchen for farting. Oh, there's fucking loads of metal on this, gang. There really is. Every time I think I've got it all, I realise that I'm naive. Cheerful Spider says, "Is is that an expression? Well, the expression is I wouldn't I wouldn't kick his ass out of bed for farting. It's you know when you find someone very attractive, you're like, whoa, I I I'd keep them in my bed even if they were flatulent, but I wouldn't take kale to bed because it's a vegetable and I eat kale, you know." Um, so it's not a, an expression really in the way I said it but Jack Wood says if by kale you mean droidicas I am minutes from screaming <laughs> oh no Jack oh no goodness I hope it goes alright Express, expressive depressive as John Super Chat saying thanks for the symbiotically soothing stream I'm having to redo about half an hour's crochet work because I realised too late I frogged too much Oof, that sounds rough. I'm very sorry that you've had to undo all that work and redo it. Uh, I, I, I'm not entirely sure what frogging in is, what frogging is in this context, um, but I am enjoying, I'm enjoying the idea that you accidentally ruined your your crochet by jumping around, and uh, eating insects on the uh, the edge of a pond. So thank you for the mental image and for the super chat. Uh, and yeah, I do hope it all comes together really swiftly and you get back on track ASAP. There's some more metal. Hey, let's paint that bit. Why not? Metal, metal, metal.
Sarah Burke says my projects are slow going because I keep chatting because chat is lovely and listening to them is soothing and I am having fun. Well, that's a great reason for things to be on a go slow. Very pleased with that. Sometimes it's nice just to have a, a bit of project, just go at a, a slower pace just because you're having a nice time. Like I, um, I don't really do it so much anymore, but I used to go to Hate, the Hackney area, tabletop enthusiasts, on Sundays just to have a, a pint and paint some miniatures with, with nice people. And I'd barely get anything done sometimes, just because we're just chatting so much. But it's a, a good, fun time. Um, a lot early on this year, sort of while the weather was still vile, I did a lot of hobby hangouts with other people from the uh, Blood Bowl uh, League, just painting and chatting online. That was always good fun. We were all working on our own teams and just sort of talking about how fun the league was going to be when it started. And I'll be honest with you, helping form that league and meeting a whole bunch of people that I didn't know before and getting closer with the people I did know before has been one of the best things that's happened this year. It's been really lovely. Um, we've just got a little WhatsApp group where we just talk excitedly about Warhammer and then arrange for fun um, fun games of Blood Bowl. We're doing a, we're doing a Christmas Cup, uh, the Yuletide Ball, we're calling it. I think I'm going to run Skaven, which will be fun. So I've never played Skaven in Blood Bowl. But it should be fun. Is that what that is? Ah! Oh. <laughs> okay. So, um... Hey chat, here's a thing. What from... <laughs> From what date do you think it's acceptable to go like full festive, like tree up, Christmas playlists, all that jazz? Because I'm not going to lie, I for some reason, it's probably because I'm looking forward to spending my first Christmas in this flat. Um, I'm starting to feel quite festive and I'm like, that's not... Also, Tom Tom Cardi's brilliant song, Nearly Almost Christmas Time, is such a good song. Um or is, is nearly not quite Christmas time. That's it. Um, but it's got me thinking about it quite a lot. But when's the cutoff point for you? 11th of December, 13th of December, 1st of December. Burrito has done a super chat saying, I enjoy hearing your commentary, so I guess here's a question. What games, in your opinion, play well on the Switch? What's your preferred console? Um, you know what? Hades is a dream on Switch. There are lots of games that I think are really enhanced by being able to take them with you, like Dead Cells and Hades. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Death's Door, even though I've got it on Steam. It's just like those kinds of experiences where you sort of pick up, pick them up and put them down. You sort of maybe it's because I played a lot of Metroid on the Game Game Boy, and the kind of Metroidvanias um, really resonate with me in that way. Um, but just games where you have a lot of runs, um, I lose interest if I have to be at my PC to do them. Whereas on the Switch, it's really easy for me to pick it up and just do a daily run. So stuff like that. Uh, my preferred console, I love the PS5. It probably is the Switch, to be honest. Because the PC serves a need for a lot of games for me. Uh, and the Switch has games that I... Basically, if I pick up a game on the Switch, because I think it's going to be a lot better on the Switch for me as an experience. So that's me answer. Zega Genesis says, Hades! Um, 
first of Advent, says Hannah Axelson. Calendar month, calendar month plus a week, says RV Dammit. So pretty soon for you, right? Aha! The nice witch says, can't have it can't have it on before the 10th because that's my birthday in it. I'd appreciate if you could all respect that. Understood the nice witch. My Christmas jumper will not be coming out until the 11th of December, probably. It won't. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it, though. This is a good Christmas jumper. If you like nuns in the 41st millennium. I mean, who doesn't, really? Heretics, I guess. They're certainly not the goodies, are they? Can't believe the Games Workshop had to put out a statement about it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. They're not the goodies. Oh, there's just a lot of metal on this. <laughs> this is really slowing me down. I was like, oh, look at this dry brushing. We'll be, we'll be done in no time. Now look at me. Just painting away. Need to change the music as well. Do, 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 do. Your library. Oh, let's have some of that on. Yeah, why not? Nice. Okay, let's keep going. Sailing K says, hello, Johnny. Hello, LSPs. Hello, Sailing K. I hope you're well. Mini Moocher says, music? Yeah, I can't have it on the stream because I'd get copyright strikes. But uh, I, uh, I, I stick some music in my little cans while I'm painting. It helps me out. Um... Although I found when I'm airbrushing, I can't listen to anything with... Uh... Lyrics. I used to listen exclusively to lo-fi beats to keep me sort of calm while airbrushing because it used to be quite nerve-wracking. Now I just listen to like rat -a tat and have a nice time. It's good. Tony Doak has done a super chat. Uh, it is of your favourite athletic fruit and mine. The pair that has shoes, limbs, a face and an, a sports headband which is white with a red band through the middle. This uh, this athletic one of your five a day is reclining gently. The sort of rounded rounded bottom part sort of coming out here. It's intermittently waving an arm like this while smiling while the text asks uh, incessantly, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? He seems to say as if he cannot retain the answer. As if he would scream if he were able. Thank you very much for the super sticker. Nick Jeffrey has done another super chat saying happy birthday in advance to the nice witch. Looking forward to the big Skelly Pals party to celebrate the occasion. Well, now we've done it. Now we've... <sighs> okay, mark your calendars, everyone. 10th of December, we're throwing the nice witch a birthday party. Unless, of course, the nice witch has... Um, has... Uh, plans for her own Twitch channel. Please enlighten us, the nice witch. Because that would be that wouldn't be a gift at all. To be like, hey, it's the nice witch's uh birthday stream. I'm streaming. So don't don't um don't watch that, watch this. That would be mean. Be mean.
Nice Witch says, ha 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 So that's good. We've not offended Nice Witch yet. Paint the wheel. It's a big metal wheel. Nice switch says, ha ha ha, I have no idea what I'm doing, but thank you. All right. Mark your calendars, everybody. We're going to wait until the nice switch publishes a stream schedule, then we're going to snipe the fuck out of it. Happy birthday. I am, of course, joking. <sighs> the nice witch says, I'm turning 300 years old and have no idea how to celebrate. It's difficult when you've already had 299 birthdays. Ideas start to run low. I understand that. I can appreciate that. Maybe that's why elves in Lord of the Rings are so tedious. They just, they just haven't been to a good birthday party in forever. So I saw a post today on a Lord of the Rings meme account I follow, which is a perfectly natural way to start a sentence. What are you talking about? Um, hang on, let's read the super chat out first. JT has done a super chat saying, uh, Morning all, and Johnny Boss, hope all is well. Short break between meetings. Would be nice if clients listen to the advice they're paying me to give them, but alas, here we are. Keep being awesome. Uh, keep being patient and uh, advising your clients, even if they don't take said advice, JT. Thank you very much for the super chat and uh, for, for stopping by between meetings. I hope said meetings go smoothly and that you have a lovely rest of your working day. Um, now let's talk about Danny DeVito. Because as a Lord of the Rings meme account I follow on Instagram, it's very good. But they um, they posted a, a, a picture of Danny DeVito and said, you can replace any one character in the Lord of the Rings with Danny DeVito. Who would it be? And I read through all of the comments there were 117 comments, I think. 117 comments. Lots of Bilbo. Uh, quite a few Aragorn. Not one person said The Ring. Which, in my opinion, is objectively the funniest way to get Danny DeVito into the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Everything is the same. Everything is the same. But Danny DeVito is round Frodo's neck the whole time. It's just there, like. See, lots of people saying Gandalf, Elrond, Legolas, Mouth of Sauron. I just think Gollum, no CGI. I just think it should be, he should be the ring. That's not a character, says Shashwat Sharma. I disagree. The ring is shown to have sentience. It betrayed Isildur. No, it betrayed... Um, yeah, it betrayed Isildur. It has sentience and agency. It slips away when it needs to. It's uncanny. It wants to be found. It's a, it is a character. It's not just a MacGuffin. And like, just imagine the scene where where Frodo falls back in uh, the tavern at Bree, and he's like, "Oh!" And then like, he just lands, and Danny Duito's belly button just goes like, "Boop," and they both go invisible. You know, like in his little tummy hole. I think it'd be brilliant. Sailing K says, "I I agree with Johnny. The ring is a character." Yeah, there we go. And just imagine the council where they're all staring at it. Like, Sean Bean is like, it is a gift. And it's just Danny DeVito like. <laughs> Will says, no, no, hear me out. Danny DeVito doesn't go invisible. <laughs> 
He's got a Bilbo's got to hide Danny DeVito behind his back while giving his birthday speech. Come on, it's it's perfect. It's perfect. The Balrog is funny. I'll give you that, Chaos, but... Just him sitting there while Gollum's, like, coveting him, and he's just like... Beer Burrito says, Gimli's axe exploding on Danny DeVito is an image I need. Exactly! And he'd be like... I mean, we shouldn't... What? Okay. Let's just say not everyone in the house agrees with my theory. Um, the nice witch says, wait, is Daniel DeVito his normal size? Goddamn right he is. Yeah, it's full-size Danny DeVito. Chained to Elijah Wood for three films. Poor Sean Astin having to pick up Elijah Wood. And Danny DeVito and carry them up Mount Doom at the end. Come on. New Line Cinema, if you're out there, you want to you want to give me an extremely well paid job. Just drop me a line. Then I could, you know, probably get an Oxventure animated series commissioned or something. It just makes sense. Oh, it would be quite funny if he was Shadow Fax, though. Hmm. Charlie Stack asks a good question. Does he talk or is he silent the whole time? Because I think Danny DeVito can do incredible things with just a look. He's a hilarious actor. But also, little interjections from Danny DeVito... The One Ring of Power would be quite funny. Like, you know, um, Gimli's just smashed his axe on him and now he's pledging his axe to Frodo. It's like, but you just... You just... You just smash the axe. Why are you pledging me a broken axe? I just think we should think it over, that's all. Or we should make Danny DeVito the chicken that Denethor's eating. Shimari Wallace asks if I've taken the ring pull off that can. Yes, I have. My moustache is safe. Thank you. Metal! We're getting there, slowly but surely. Ooh. Slowly but surely. Grumble says again with the cannibalism. It's not cannibalism if he's a chicken. You do understand acting, Grumble. They don't actually eat Danny DeVito as the chicken. Ooh, B. Mother says make Danny DeVito every single orc or goblin. That would be pretty good. Mmm, that is pretty tempting. I mean, the looks like meat's back on the menu boys argument would be so good. That's the best one I've heard outside of make Danny DeVito the one ring.
Wraith Shadow Hearts on Super Chat saying, On airbrush, any good tips on starting? I have one, but I am terrified to use it. All the videos I see are techniques, not how to use the silly thing. So, um, the, you can find some very simple guides. I think the Cult of Paint has a good guide on how just literally how to start using an airbrush. I would say, um, first of all, uh, practice with priming. The reason for this is uh, twofold, maybe even threefold. We'll see how we go. Number one, a lot of airbrush thinner is already at the right consistency. So, um, for example, let me just do this last edge and then I'll, I'll show you what, what I've got. Um, <laughs> Danny DeVito is Mount Doom. Uh, so... With an airbrush, oh dear. Um, I use it for priming because it A, you can do it any time of year. You don't have to wait for good weather to run outside with a rattle can and start priming. Uh, oh god, this brush is not coming clean. Give me one sec. Um... Fine. Um, but... Here we've got Vallejo's Mecca Primer, which is um, an airbrush-based primer, which is basically, it's the right consistency for airbrushing. Um, if you use it, not only will it prime your miniatures really well, but it'll help you sort of get a feel for what the right consistency is in your airbrush chamber in order to get good flow, but also good coverage. Um, after that, you need to experiment with how far away you're holding the model versus the PSI or um, like pressure per square inch of um, of your compressor because if you're holding it too close and your mix is thin but coming out at a high PSI it blasts it on and then just <laughs> like spreads it out and it all runs off so if you if you sort of do it at more of a distance then um, you can get a really smooth coat and that then when you start mixing your own colors you can get a really smooth gradient um, for me, um, I actually found when I was priming all this lot, I did actually put a little bit of thinner into this primer. Um, but yeah, uh, that would sort of be it. Uh, don't be too afraid of it. Like the first few times I used my airbrush, I had some miniatures primed that I didn't think were very well primed, but they were still usable. And to be honest, some of them, I just went back over them the next time. And they are good. So, um, uh, yeah. Uh, handy. Um, just experiment and watch a couple of, of, um, a couple of guides. And you'll go from there. Excuse me, that's rude. Gosh, hello. Oh, Astrid Johnson is, a chat, is in the chat. Hello, Astrid. Um, sorry about GHG. Um, it was a bloody exciting project. I hope you're doing okay. Um, Stuart W says, what about Arnold Schwarzenegger as Bilbo and Danny DeVito as Frodo? Oof. This is my 111th birthday. I regret to inform you that this is the end. I'm going now. <laughs> Proud foots. Proud feet. <laughs> I know less than half of you have as much as I should like. And I like less than half of you have, have as well as you deserve. All right, now my throat hurts. And let's face it, not, none of that was good. Oh, I see we have moved inevitably on to uh, Muppets casting. As, um, as in Lord of the Rings. If he says Eagle Sam as Denethor, very good. What about Statler and Waldorf as Boromir, Boromir and Faramir? Hannah Axelson says, oh, 
Arnold as uh, Galadriel just for the intro monologue. <laughs> Instead of a dark lord, you would have a queen. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop doing that. West Coast Weaver says my ears hurt. Damn. Ooh, Statler and Waldorf as Gandalf and Saruman. I gave you the chance to aid me willingly! But you have chosen the way of pain! Do oh, ho 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 ho! <laughs> Very good. Is it weird that I think Rizzo is Frodo and Gonzo is Samwise? Because he's kind of used to to prodding Rizzo through stories, like in Muppet's Christmas Carol. I will take it. <laughs> Animal is the Balrog, if you ask me. Will says, Fozzie Bear is Boromir. Are you sure you do not suffer needlessly? <laughs> Beaker is Elrond. <laughs> Just handing out Anduril Flame of the Worst. Me, 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 me. Yes, please. Oh my god. Oh my god. Kermit would be Aragorn. Yeah, I think he'd sell the moment where he breaks his toe on the helmet really well as well. <laughs> One does not simply whack a whacker into Mordor, says Tom Williams. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, controversial choice, but I'm going to say Miss Piggy for the King Under the Mountain. The way has shut! Oh, good lord. Chat, you know, we do go places on these streams, don't we? Not always sensical places, not always good places, but we go places. Metal. Lots of metal. Painting it. Painting it up. Oh, there's a bit I missed. <laughs> I'll still be here at midnight saying that, I think. The way you shut. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. The, here we go. Christopher Needham says Gollum takes the Tim Curry role of real human. It's Andy Circus without mocap. This is a very, very good question. What is the one human who is still in there? Oh. <laughs> that one with the beard says I took a drink at the wrong moment there, and now I have a wet keyboard. <laughs> oh. If he says, okay, who's Eowyn? Ooh, that is tricky. Who's the Swedish chef in this? Who Who is the Swedish chef? I mean, Swedish chef being Galadriel, so he could just be throwing shit in the pool. When Frodo's like, what will I see? Birdie, 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 birdie. <laughs> will says, I do really want to see Miss Piggy do, I am no man. Hiya. But yeah, that's good. Dr. Teeth is Tom Bombadil. 
Saruman the only human. Jessica Lisa's got to be Frodo. Yeah. The Swedish chef is worm tongue. Oh my god, that's good. The the no switch. Corvus Albright says, I think keep Vigo as the one human. It makes the incompetency of the rest of the fellowship. That's much more sensible. Yeah. Oh, who's Aomer? Aomer's got to be a good one. Because there's the whole I would cut off your head, dwarf, if it stood but a little bit higher from the ground. Salem K says, hear me out, have Miss Piggy be both Eowyn and Arwen, just so that when Aragorn meets Eowyn, he can be like, you look familiar. <laughs> oh, Teresa M says, Bean Bunny is Pippin. <laughs> Aomer is boomerang fish guy. <laughs> when he, when he, he kills the elephant. Oh, and a boomerang fish. I throw the fish away and it comes back to me. <laughs> oh, this is good. I'm having fun. Oh, there's so much fucking metal to paint. Oh, there's so much terrain. Sailing cases, Amer Sweetums. Amer and Galadriel are Bunsen and Beaker. <laughs> it turns out there are a lot of a lot of roles to cast in the Lord of the Rings, huh? Obviously, the um, the role of Shelob would be played from the spider from the alley in um, in uh, Muppet's Christmas Carol. Get off! Very cheap, Damask. Don't pay extra for the warmth. You should, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's that sewn up. Um, Tony Doak is done a super chat saying haven't laughed this loud since you called Banksy a shitlord so thanks LSP friends for such amazing casting choices you're very welcome forgot about our little Banksy chat it's a, it's a shame to waste him on such a small part but I would quite like Beaker to be the guard who first notices that the beacons are lit in Minas Tirith <laughs> they're going up and he's like oh 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 me 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 I'd like that that'd be fun An animal could be the, the uh, Uruk Berserker who blows up the wall of Helm's Deep. There's a lot. Will says, what is handy about casting Lord of the Rings with Muppets is that they both have the same number of female roles. Bloody love Muppets Christmas Carol. It's so good. Oh, so much, so much to paint here. Like it's not hard, but there's just so much. Do I need to do the underside here? Yeah, no, I don't really. Gonzo is Gothmark. <laughs> 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 
if he says unpopular opinion, I like Muppets Treasure Island better than Christmas Carol. I, you know what? I that's a surprisingly common opinion. Um, I always preferred Christmas Carol, but I did love Treasure Island. I haven't watched it in about twenty years. I, Gonzo is grand, Gonzo. <laughs> oh dear. Camilla the chicken as the chicken, <laughs> says Rudy. I think Camilla the chicken would be my shout for Galadriel. Oh, Bean Bunny as Pippin is 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 just inspired though. Poor Bean Bunny never gets a break. Oh, I'm going to be dreaming about painting these little bits of metal in my sleep tonight. All right. That's how we're looking. It's coming along. We're approaching, maybe, who knows, all of the metal bits done. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> Never mind. It's all right. We'll have a break in 23 minutes. That was a bit clumsy, but oh well. Oh, <laughs> there's so much. Sudden flashbacks to painting the Skaven Screaming Bell years and years ago. Whew. Swedish Chef Denethor. Who said that? Who was that? Yeah, Jessica Lee, that's inspired. The one who handles a lot of small objects is Denethor, so the Swedish chef is Denethor. Just cracking open bits of chicken and banging them over his shoulder. Like, boom! Tomatoes going... Pfft. Absolutely inspired. Okay. We're getting we're actually getting there. I'm not just saying it now. Ooh. Sam the Eagle is the Eagles, says Alex Simpkin. Yep. The nice switch says fair play to the Muppets for being the best. That one with the beers says heading out. We'll catch up on VOD. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Take care, that one with the beers. Alrighty, so what have we got? <laughs> 
left on this before we hit it with the rust thing. We've got the, ske oh, the skeletons are on the other model. Uh, we do have a skull here and some bones littered around here and some stone. There's some stone in there. So we'll crack up, crack on with that bit. And, uh, and, uh, and we'll get to the other one. Have a break in 20 minutes. Oh, I'll be back. Okay. A little bitty skull, just hanging out there. And then there's what looks like a femur there. Another skull over here. It's, a, it's always cheerful painting Warcry stuff. I haven't started assembling the two war bands that came with this box yet, but I am still tempted to do uh, Spider-Man colours on the kind of spider-adjacent team. I just think it would be fun. Little, little skull. Oh, there are little cheeky bones hidden everywhere. Behave. Um, skulls littered all about this terrain, so there are so many little details. I mean, you know, I'm happy for the sculptor and everything, but come on. Little secret skull. Do, 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 do. More of them. It's a veritable gold gotha. I don't think I'm going to bother painting the stone down here. It's going to be atmospherically black. There we go. The skulls I will do. The rest can fuck off. Mm, is that bone? It is now. Mm, this miniature still smells like airbrush primer. Probably shouldn't sniff that too hard. <sighs> God, we're still going on the Muppets across Lord of the Rings, are we? <laughs> More skulls, they're just everywhere. 
Ah, there's one I missed. God. Just tidy up after yourselves. There's, no one wants to work in this environment. Crap wages and skulls everywhere. No wonder people are walking out. Phew. Cyborg Penguin says, hello everyone, what's this about Muppets meets Lord of the Rings? Because I'm all for that. Just let your imagination go wild. We are coming up with the ultimate casting for Lord of the Rings. Alright, so that's the metal done. And the secret skulls. A lesser known semi-sonic B-side. Um, we're just going to do that bit of stone and then we'll be on to the, the big bucket machine. <laughs> oh, uh... let me change the music again. Actually, this isn't really working for me. Akira says, hey Johnny, a bit late, but glad to catch up on some of the stream. There's no such thing as being late to my streams. You, much like a wizard, arrive precisely when you mean to. And anyway, it all goes up on VOD, so if you want to catch up later, you can. And if you want to just start here, welcome aboard. It is an easygoing ship we run here. Titan Uranus says, so what is that? Some sort of foot-powered derrick? This, my friend, is a Varanite siphon. It pulls up realm stone, infused with chaotic energy from the ground, and it is used in part to make terrifying weapons, but also other things. So this is meant to be huge, like your average mini. Uh, that's not the right scale. I mean, I'll, sh I'll show you, it's not, oh, fuck's sake, it's not the right scale, but I'll show you a Blood Bowl miniature next to it. Like, these things are meant to be very big. So, like, oh, let's siphon some Varanite, why not? Right, um, there's the brush. Let's paint stone. Storm vermin fur, not yet. Ashen grey, please. You can tell I've been painting recently and haven't tidied it up because I'm looking around my desk. There we go. Grumble says five minutes until kale stew. Set your watches, everybody. Rudy Gover says, Varen, nice. <laughs> Very good. Big fan of that. <sighs> ah, Gonzo the Great already scans for Gandalf the Grey and him fighting the Balrog would be fun, says Emma Blass. Emma, that is a fantastic point. God, that, yeah. No, that really works, doesn't it? Hmm. It's difficult. So many good Muppets. So many good parts. Okay, hear me out. So we keep all of the casting we've just done. But when it comes to the question of we can keep one human, it's Danny DeVito and it's all of the orcs. Like we discussed earlier. Huh? Because I think that would be something else. Hmm. 
but Gonzo screaming, you shall not pass, in the same tone as when the bell tolls one. Perfection. Look to my coming uh, on the third, uh, first light on the third day at dawn, look to the east. He's there in a cannon. If he says, now nah, the orcs are yip-yips, I don't want to be that... I'm going to be that person, but aren't Yip Yips from Sesame Street, and thus not Muppets? I realise I may have just inadvertently opened an enormous can of worms here, but... Wraith Shadowhearts and a super chat saying, Thanks for the airbrush advice. I'll watch back later for the products. Also, would the charge of the Rahiram be more or less terrifying as Muppets? It would be... I think it would be more inspiring. I hope. Because you, you don't want it to be an underwhelming moment, do you? I think I'd still tear up a little bit. We opened up to Sesame Street characters minutes ago. Not on my watch, Iffy. Nick Jeffrey's done another super chat. Say, made it home. Thanks for keeping me sane on the bus trip. Johnny, magnificent specimen of a human. I love these streams, even though I don't paint. I'm glad. Like, I am... Um, I'm aware that half of the time I stream on this channel, it's for a hobby that a lot of viewers don't follow and don't really have any interest in. Um, so it always makes me happy when people turn up anyway. Um... It's a lot of fun. I, I get a lot out of it. And like, it's just nice to have a slightly different tempo on a stream every now and then, I think. And when I say every now and then, I mean 50% of the time. Okay. Aiden folks, as if we're says if we're opening up to the whole Muppet Pantheon, could we use anybody from Farscape? Come on now! It wouldn't be a Muppet's Lord of the Rings if we started bringing in puppets from fucking Farscape. We need some cohesion here. Might as well bring in Gordon the Gopher. Or Bodger and Badger. One of those was human. We're not wasting... We're not wasting the uh, the one human casting on Bodger. God rest his weary soul. What about Fraggles? No! Zega Genesis says, an easier question is Muppets the Hobbit. Yeah, fair. Rudy Gerber says, Jim Henson also did the, the puppets in Return of the Jedi. This is just going to turn into Ready Player One. What we're doing now is we're casting Ready Player One. <laughs> We've gone dangerously off track. This is how you get films like The Hobbit, where they split a short book into three films. Half the length of The Fellowship of the Ring for crying out loud. Honestly, you've... You're drunk on power, chat. Yoda is Danny DeVito. Oh my god, no! <laughs> Ah, oh, you took it too far, chat. Come on. <laughs> JT just says, woo, power. <sighs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, just Call Me Wendy says, what is that that, that the Johnny is painting? Catapult? No, it's a, it's a, it's a Varanite siphon. It's basically meant to be like an an oil derrick, I think, that kind of like, boom, bloop, like pulls oil up from the ground, but it's not oil, it's varanite, which is something entirely different and fictional, may I add. But 
we're about as far into this little monstrosity as I think we need to be for today because I don't I don't want to tempt fate by uh, playing with the <laughs> seemingly quite dangerous rust paint. So we'll leave that there and we'll start work on this smaller but no less complicated uh, piece of terrain which is kind of like a bucket system which kind of it pulls them up pulls up buckets of varanite and then tips them over and then there's another piece that I don't have here but it's a little chute um, that kind of is meant to guide the varanite down onto the little little tiny little tiny pipes where the varanite kind of is, is moved along by conveyor belt it's a whole mumpin factory but anyway right we are going to have a five to seven minute break now. Um, so, um, uh, Hermit Prime says, what have I missed? You're just in time for the break, Hermit Prime. Um, but you've missed a lot of dry brushing. Basically, we've painted this so far. Um, and after the break, we'll be painting this. Uh, so look forward to that. Five to seven minute break. Um, Get some water, do some stretching if you need to, have a move around, uh, you know, are you warm enough, are you hungry? Attend to your basic human needs and we shall return for more of this kind of nonsense. Um, if you're not going anywhere, possibly because you're still arguing about whether or not um, characters from Star Wars are allowed in a Muppets uh, version of Lord of the Rings, then you can stay here and I'll leave you with some, uh, some smooth jazz. But as the nice switch says, everyone go and think about what you did. So, um, yeah, five to seven minutes. Here's the dog and some smooth music. Uh, be right back. Thank you. 
Oh, hi everyone. <coughs> Excuse me. Welcome back. Um, I hope you enjoyed that break. I trust you found it refreshing. Um, uh, good. <laughs> Dear, I don't know what's wrong with me at the moment. Right. Um, let's see now. Change album again. I don't know what I'm listening. I don't know what to listen to at the moment. It's quite annoying. Um, mm, mm. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll do some of that. All right, lovely. Okay. Oh. oh. Right. More terrain. More metal. Let's do this. Okay. Paint, paint, paint. Daub, daub, daub. There you Genesis has done <laughs> a super chat saying Muppets Oxventure, keep Johnny, but who are the rest? Interesting. Gosh, that is interesting. Go, chat, go for it. Simply Dave says, have you been getting better sleep lately or is the lighting just very good? You look a bit younger today. <laughs> Thank you for informing me that the ravages of time are less evident today. I have not been getting better sleep, so it's probably the lighting. And also, uh, I trimmed my beard back quite severely, and I think that's taken some of, some of the years off, shall we say. But uh, thank you very much anyway. Um, for the the pleasant observation. Uh, yeah, no, good sleep is is but a distant memory at this point in time. Beaker definitely dub, says Mike Feely. Bruno Bear for Marilwen. Egbert is Fozzie. Egbert is Fozzie's pretty good. Dob is Kermit. Corazon is Miss Piggy. Hmm. This is a tricky one. Not least again because the Muppets is quite light on on female characters. Not that we can't, you know, do gender blind casting, but um that's you know, the options aren't exactly uh, vast. Uh Anas Krecker says, might have missed this, but who would be Gollum? I can't remember who we settled on, actually. Um, thank you for the super chat, by the way. Uh, chat, if you could remind Anas, then uh, that would be great, because I have forgotten. Dob is definitely Kermit, though, says Yasmin. Kermit is Dob, it ain't easy being green. Fair. I have to say, a lot of you are far more encyclopedic on the names of the Muppets than I am. So I'm seeing some here that I'm like, yes, I don't know who that is. Oh, yeah, we sort of said Gollum would just be Andy Serkis without the mocap suit. Just Andy Serkis. You know what? It's not Andy Serkis' fault. But so many people took being able to do a Gollum impression and made it a personality trait back in the early 2000s that I hate the voice. I hate it. And it's impacted how I view Andy Serkis. <laughs> also, I mean, he takes a hell of a lot of credit for uh, for being like a mocap genius when actually it's not just him. There are entire teams of people that come that 
pitched in to realise his uh, his cinematic roles. But anyway, yeah, I just if I, if anybody around me does a Gollum impression, I instantly think less of them. I'm like, come on, please. Is that harsh? Is it judgmental? Yes. Is it warranted? Also, yes. Kale Stew achieved. Thanks for the company and entertainment while stirring this absolute vat of a pot, everyone. Congratulations, Grumble. I hope it's more tasty than several bowls full of yarn. Lauren says, unpopular opinion, maybe, but I feel like Miss Piggy would make an iconic Corazon. That's interesting, because Miss Piggy is kind of, like, forthright enough, certainly, but is Miss Piggy insecure enough? Because I think Corazon as a character is meant to be quite insecure about his place in the world. Miss Piggy is easily affronted, but is that necessarily the same thing as being insecure? I don't know. Christopher Needham agrees, though. Uh, Miss Piggy is the ideal Corazon. Penny42 says, I need a Seal Gaiman beaker. I've already said it, but I'm out of ideas. Seal Gaiman as beaker would be pretty... Pretty spot on, actually. I agree. Titan Uranus has done a super chat saying the Gollum voice is just a replacement personality for people who aren't cool enough to do a Borat impression. Oh, no. Oh, God. Anyone who still quotes Anchorman as well can fucking do one. Can we get Seal Gaiman merch? He's the true hero of the series. Take it up with outside Xbox, I'm afraid. I, I don't have any say as to what Oxventure merch gets made. Um, I'm not part of that part of the business. But I think they generate a lot of ideas, so that's that's good. BP Phantom says, but think about it, Borat doing a Gollum impression. Ugh. If he says, who would be 60 skeletons in the flaming skull? Danny DeVito. <laughs> the Nice Witch says, I think we can all agree that Beaker is literally anyone is very, 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 very funny. Yeah, correct. <laughs> EA122 says, imagine Gollum voiced by Matt Berry. Give me the ring. <laughs> Burrito has done a super chat saying Gollum and Gandalf impressions are two that desperately need to be put to pasture. Yeah. Or I've still done the occasional Gandalf impression. Mostly actually at the start of episodes of uh, playthrough of Shadow of Mordor I did. So I feel like that's kind of a bit more. It's, a, it's less heinous. I do think it was very sweet that Ian McKellen went to all those schools and talking to the kids was like, you've got to study for your exams, otherwise you shall not pass. I thought that was good of him. It's also cool that he just runs a pub. Why not? Okay, this is starting to come together very, 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 very slowly. But one day, the sun will will stop generating the solar energy necessary to power life on Earth. And it won't matter anymore, so that's good. Just me that cheers themselves up with... Thoughts of the heat death of the universe? Probably. Oh, there's so much metal to paint.
Oh, good, it's not just me. Hurrah. <laughs> Grumble says, there's the fatalism that seasons my stew. Thomas Tomasi says, that's not going to happen for billions of years. The heat death, not for trillions. Yeah, I know, but... I can dream, can't I? Whatever keeps you, you know, you going, you know? If he's done a super chat saying this conversation has massively boosted my mood, so thanks, Skelly Pals. Johnny, I still think any mu any puppet made by Jim Henson can be classed as a Muppet. On that, we disagree, but I am nonetheless grateful for your contribution to the chat and indeed the super chat. And I'm glad that this very silly conversation that ran for a very long time has uh, has lifted your mood. I just lo I just love talking shit about Lord of the Rings, really. Not talking shit about it as in like. I just love, like, you know, like, laying into Lord of the Rings. That's not what I mean. I mean, just, you know, basically the equivalent of shit posting, but out loud. Okay. That's that bit. Let's do this little trunk on the capstan, shall we? Don't know what you'd call this bit. Turny bit. Round and round pole. Okay. Oh, so much. Every time I paint terrain, I end up like this, just marveling at how much there is left to do. It's going a lot quicker than the other terrain I've painted, so that's fine. Christopher Needham sent a super chat saying, one of the autocomplete questions for Sir Ian McKellen is, who is Ian McKellen's wife? I've never been more filled with... I've never been filled with more gay wrath. <laughs> Some people are so delightfully naive. And that's the fun thing about a search engine, is it's like the perfect place to catch those people in the act and shame them with autocomplete. <sighs> Will says, speaking of Lord of the Rings and Mary specifically, I think th think that is drive shaft. It is it's the fucking drive shaft. We've come full circle. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's happened. Will, that is possibly the best thing you've ever said in chat. My god. Drive shaft, eh? 
What was this? What was their big single meant to be in Lost? Was it like do do you wanna do, do you feel the wanna do? What was it? It's really gonna bother me. It's hey you do you? What the fuck was it? Uh. What the fuck? What the fuck was it called? What was their What was their big hit in Lost? Drive shaft. Somebody must know. You all, everybody. Oh, thank Christ! No wonder I didn't remember that. You all, everybody. <laughs> Cheerful Spider says, "Do you want to feel? You want to do?" Which sounds like a mashup of Peter Frampton and the Spice Girls. Another searingly contemporary reference from me there. Ooh, yes, really raking in the youth of today on these streams. <laughs> you all, everybody. An absolute banger. Poor Charlie from Lost. He just loved heroin, didn't he? He loved it. Loved it. And he was like, phew, maybe, maybe I won't do more heroin now I'm on this island. And then, oops, a daisy, a plane full of Virgin Mary statues. Absolutely rammed with the stuff. Tricky, you know? You all, everybody. And then what's his name was like, I'll give you your heroin back if you ask me three times. And then he was like, give it back. And then he burnt it, which is like was cool symbolism. But also anyone standing downwind would have been absolutely trolleyed. Trolleyed on heroin. All aboard the H train, etc, etc. Metal, 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 metal. Sven Hanneman says, Youth of Today and Timely References. As mentioned on the Keo Discord today, Toy Story 1 was released in 1995. Wow. Wow. Christ. Ah, well, it's fine. You know, the linear nature of time. Makes fools of us all. Sure, why not? But... Crap. Oh, I really overdone it on the silver there. Oopsie. I will paint over that probably. It's just so much of it. So much metal to paint. I don't know if I've mentioned that, gang, but there's quite a lot to do on this model. And indeed all the other ones. Which again is why I'm glad I'm doing it on a stream, because it's nice to kind of have company while slogging through this stuff. <coughs> Simply Dave says, wow, Lost was 10 years ago. No, 11. Well, it must have finished 11 years ago, right? Because it started long before that. It started in like... ...2004? 2005? Toreador the Explorador says, not to mention the Fellowship is approaching its 20th. Yeah. It's, um... That one threw me a little bit. They've held up really well, those films, I think. Quick Sausage Raven says, thanks for reminding me I'm turning 40 next year. Happy birthday for next year! I really do think we're conditioned to see ages like 30 or 40 as old, and I don't think that's helpful, because actually it's not. 
It's just not old. This is fine. Whipple Wapple says, hello, Johnny. It's nice to catch the stream again. How are thee? I'm okay, actually. Um, I'm doing all right. Just painting a lot of metal on, um, on these here buckets and chains and other things. Um, not doing the neatest job, but then I don't really have to because I'm going to smash on sort of a rust wash um, when it's all ready to go. Um, and that'll just make it look very different anyway. So I'm not being super hard on myself for not being mega, mega neat. Uh, but nonetheless, there's still a lot to paint on here. If I were trying to paint this to like an impossible, well, not an impossibly high standard, but to like competition standard, I think I would just start screaming. So um, it's good that I've given myself the permission to be a little bit slapdash. Sometimes you just need that in life. Not a literal slap and dash. Happy slapping has not been cool for a long time, kids. Stay in school. Yeah. Oh. Metal everywhere. All right, so the chains are mostly there, aren't they? No, <laughs> no, they aren't. Titan Uranus says, what was that Slappy Salmon thing, or Happy Salmon? Happy Salmon is an incredible card game that's all about doing the same actions as other people when they need you to do them, but you do all of your actions before they do. Uh, it's got several moves, including high five, fist bump, change places, um, and of course, the Happy Salmon. It's great. Cheap game, endlessly entertaining. Love it. Comes in a little zip-up fish, which is great. Normally, someone attaches a fish to a zip and you think, no, I don't want to buy or eat that. But Happy Salmon, oh, it's a treat. Right, we're getting there. Very, very slowly. You know what's good? And I'll explain I'll explain my thought process. I was thinking about salmon and then I was thinking about supermarkets. You know what's really, really good? Wait, what? They changed Happy Salmon and there's no more fish bag? Random workings, why did they do that? You can still get the fish bag on Amazon, but it's running out. No. Oh, that sucks. But it's still great. Anyway, right. Um, you know what I like? And I was thinking about supermarkets. Um... It's going past the big bags of rice and giving them a slap. If you haven't given them a big slap, have you really gone past the big bags of rice? I certainly don't think so. It's one of life's great pleasures. If 
Fish don't stack. I know they don't stack, but come in. It was such a good little thing. The little inner bag fish for Happy Salmon. Although if they did it in like fake sardine tins, that would be cool. But yeah, uh, slap in the rice bags. Pow! Just me? I kind of thought that was a universal thing. I could be wrong. Thomas Tomasi says, Lal, I'm going to have to try slapping the rice now. You won't regret it. One of the people who works at my local co-op has a rubber bell bike horn on his bike that's chained up outside. Biggest pleasure of my day, honking the co-op horn. <laughs> oh, rice bags. Code for something. Why do we want to slap rice? Are you telling me you've never just slapped the bag of rice in the supermarket? This isn't a euphemism. I'm talking about, you know when they've got like sacks of rice that are slapped up, like slapped up, stacked up. Pa! Just Pow! Here we go. Mephi to go says, I worked at our university's canteen some years ago. We had stacks and stacks of bags of rice and pasta. Um, 25 kilograms per sack. Slap the, slap the ever-loving shit out of them on a daily basis. There we go. Uh, Corvus Albright says, Johnny Dearest, could I get a shout out for my lovely friend Janine, please? She's tuning in for the first time and needs a proper welcome. Jaeger bomb! Hello, Janine. Welcome aboard. Um, I uh, understand that you've been uh, influenced, shall we say, by Corvus Albright to uh, to tune in. Um, I I really hope you enjoy what you find here on the channel. Uh, there are some very friendly people here, and we we do, oh we do have fun. Um, but uh, yeah, most importantly, just uh, I hope you're well, and I hope you're having a lovely day. And thank you, Corvus Albright, for the uh, the super chat and for the uh, the shout of Jaeger bomb. Um, Janine, I don't know how many Jaeger bombs you've been forced to have in your life but uh i hope it's not more than you would like um because they're definitely a once in a blue moon treat for me and when i say treat occurrence we'll call them so there we go but yeah um uh you've joined us just as we're talking about slapping big bags of rice it's great it's lovely just they're just so pleasing. They've got a heft. Just pow. Can thoroughly recommend. Next time you're in the supermarket. Pow. Hit the rice bag. And it's it's a victimless crime. Like it doesn't uh, doesn't um like affect the, the produce. Um it's not like that stupid gallon challenge where people were just going and dropping two gallon jugs of milk on the floor and making someone clean it up and being like, ooh, that's a zany. Oh, that's a bit of sprue I didn't cut off. Oh, well. It's actually the second bit of sprue I didn't cut off that I found on this here bit of terrain, but that's fine. Maybe that's why the whole Varanite operation ground to a halt. We don't know. Germs, says Revolver Rock. No, you just slap you slap the rice. There's no germs involved. You don't have to put germs in the rice. You just slap in a bag of rice. Rice isn't good to eat raw. It'll be cooked. It'll be safe. Don't worry. Slap the rice. Pow. Same goes with fertilizer, actually. Last time I bought fertilizer, I was walking away from the garden centre, and a guy who worked there stopped and went, "No, you do not like your you do not look like your average horticulturalist." I was like, "Oh, thank you. I don't know. I just like growing chilies, mate." So that was fun. I think I've told that story before, to be honest. So whatever. Metal, metal, metal. Paint, paint, paint. It's the new cream, cream, cream chant, isn't it? Okay. Come on. There we go. In there and round there. Metal, metal, metal. 
I'm getting very slapdash now, which generally means I'm getting tired. Will quite rightly says that fertiliser isn't good cooked either. Very true. can be extremely dangerous cooked, I believe. And that's a... I'll say no more on that in case I start getting surveilled by a government of some description. Although if you are listening in UK government, fuck you. Ooh. Jessica Lee says, our big bags of rice are usually on the bottom shelf, out of slapping range. Have to go to a hardware store to slap big bags of stuff. Jessica, that's tough. I'm sorry. Have you considered changing uh, supermarkets? All right. It's an adjacent pleasure to tumping a dog. You know, like when you've been like fussing over a dog, like pet, 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 you're really good. And then you're like, oh, okay. And you need to tell the dog you're done. You're like, all right, good old tump, like on the flank, like nice solid dog. Give it a good tump. Pump, pump, pump. It just makes that little, like, tump. It's great. It's great fun. Alex Thorold, presumably talking about rice being on the bottom shelf out of slapping range, says, just do the old squat and slap. Yeah, just give him the old razzle-dazzle. You do what with dogs, says Revolver Rock? Tumping. T-U-M-P. You tump a dog. Tump, tump, tump. It's onomatopoeic. Tump, tump. Watson, for example, is eminently tumpable. For she is a good dog. Who is having a nap in the bedroom, I just discovered when I went on break. For five to seven minutes. Okay. I was actually kind of dreading painting this bit of terrain in particular, so being able to do it on stream is really nice. Because I knew it was going to be a bit of a slog, but it doesn't feel quite so much like a chore if I'm doing it on these streams. Even though I appreciate me painting terrain, probably isn't the most exciting of streams. Every now and then you just got to get stuff done. Okay. Slowly but surely, we're painting the thing. Some of this really is quite clumsy, but thankfully the rust wash will help. Okay. We're actually further along than I thought. There's a lot under these legs. And then I need to pay attention to the skeletons on the capstan. But, apart from that, we're doing okay. <sighs> Alex Moxham says, Johnny, will you ever use physical props like this in a D&D playthrough like Oxventure? No. 
Uh, I don't like using maps or miniatures in D&D. Uh, no disrespect to those who do. It is useful for organising combat, but I prefer to do it all theatre of the mind because it's just more evocative. I find that when I whack down a map and miniatures, people are just looking at that and they're just focusing on it like a miniatures game and I just don't like it as much. Um, also, in terms of like producing content, I just don't think it's as engaging to show like the floor you know a, a tabletop with with miniatures where people are like okay so i say this and um i just feel like it's sort of it's a bit of a barrier between the audience and the actual player interactions um so this is purely for like wargaming for me um i will draw maps if people are confused as to the terrain but that's more to fix it in their minds than to give them like an updated play-by-play. -play. That's just how I like to do things. Obviously, there's no right or wrong way to, to do this. Um, it's about what works for you and what you're comfortable with. But my own personal preference is not to use minis. Also, if I want to throw a weird monster at people, I don't want to have to paint it first. And then if I just use a counter, they'll be like, eh. So that's my reasoning. Oh my god, there's so much on this. What even is that bit? Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. So many little metal details. Be good to just come running in with a brush and just slap rust on it. Oh. If he says, I use dice as minis, but just for me, my players aren't showing it on the camera. I mean, that's useful in terms of keeping track of where everything is in your head. Um, it's clever, actually. One of the other reasons I like... Uh, just going pure theatre of the mind is it allows you to sort of fudge distances if you want, like you know, and people are like, oh, how far am I away? It's like, well, if it hasn't come up and you you know, you feel like your character would be trying would have been trying to get closer then absolutely I'm going to let you be close enough to do the thing that you're thinking about. It's like, you know, can we say that all this time I've been edging closer? Absolutely. I might make them roll to see whether they actually made it closer or whether they're, you know, whether the opponent is aware of them or whatever. But I just, you know, when it's measured in like inches and, you know, people are really strict about it. I just, it just feels constrictive somehow. Restrictive, constrictive, restrictive. Oh, Jebediah, uh, sorry, Jedediah Taylor says, Johnny, have you considered creating stats for terrible, terrible Jake, the Swan of Justice? I daren't. You know, it's I don't want to tempt fate like that. What if terrible Jake became reality and destroyed us all? 
Um, yeah, I, I, I would rather leave him as an unknowable kind of ancient, really, than actually stat him up. <sighs> come on come on here we go oh I am getting tired I'm talking to this miniature like it's my dog More metal. It's getting there. Eccentric Lefty says, Who is Terrible Jake? So, there was a time when I was still at Dicebreaker when we did some werewolf crossover streams with Outside Xbox and Extra. And, um... Uh... I ran the uh, games once and Luke ran them once. Um, and for some reason, um, uh, there was a goose called Terrible Jake who was like the executioner in the town and would batter people to death with his wings. And then kind of we, we moved forward into like basically the 41st millennium where Terrible Jake was like, an, over, an evil overlord with laser eyes and stuff like that. It was just it was just a, a way of sp spicing up, shall we say, the narrative around uh, Werewolf. But Terrible Jake was basically a, a, a dread goose who would... Uh, was he a swan? Was he a swan? Um, is everyone saying, do I hear a cat? Possible. I've had headphones in. Um... Why is everyone talking about 2020 the bear all of a sudden? Who did that? Dan Peterson says, Johnny, have you lost weight? I've lost beard. I've cut a lot of my beard off. That's probably it. Simply Dave says, I remember that was when Luke got the GM bug. Actually, yeah, it did, it did kind of... Um, Stem a little bit from that. He was like, "That was fun." I was like, well, "Do the do the real thing. Do the do the full full blown version. Show the bear. I'm gonna show the fucking bear. Give me a second. You've summoned 2020. The bear. 2020. The bear is on the way. Fucking bear. Just trying to... There's so many bits of metal. <laughs> oh, there's more there. Right, I'm going to do this bit. This sort of clump of metal here. Then I'll show you the dread bear. We're going to chase off Janine. Janine only just joined. We're about to show 2020 the bear. For context, Janine. 2020 the bear, but basically there was a time when I had a zombie bear miniature and I decided to paint it up thinking like, tee hee, this will be fun. And it actually turned out to be quite unnerving. So we named it 2020 the bear because 2020 was a shit year. Um, and now it's kind of just become a thing whereby any time 2020 the bear gets mentioned, I have to show 2020 the bear on camera. Um... And it's uh, it's a lot, so I apologise for this. And if you never want to tune in again, I, I get it. I totally get it. But here we go. Tom Chapman says every time I arrive late, the bear is summoned immediately. I fear I may be the catalyst. Hmm. Burrito's done a super chat saying F for the chat resurrecting twenty twenty the bear. Here we go. Here we go, you horrible lot. 
This is 2020 the bear. 2020 the bear has clown makeup and vacant white eyes. And some of the flesh on his arm has sloughed off. Um, and obviously his guts are on show. That's 2020 the bear for you. There you go. Ooh, Will says time to go see Nish Kumar. Nish Kumar, bye gang, love you, be goblins. Have fun, Will. That sounds like a great fun gig. Okay. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. Janine says, sweet lord. Yep, that's, that's 2020 the bear for you. The good news is 2020 can only be summoned once per stream. Um, because it's the only way we get through, <laughs> I think. Okay, right. Uh, metal, metal check. No, I haven't done those bits. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You done that bit. You done that bit. Shit. Here we go. More fucking metal. And there. Okay. Um. God, I think we've done it. By Jove. I think we've actually done it. Oh my god. Oh, right. Excuse me, goodness. I'm just going to clean the brush from all of the metallic silver. Cyborg Penguin says, Oh no, I haven't seen him since he was first painted. I forgot what he looked like. Horrible is the answer. Bloody horrible. A nasty little bastard, isn't he? Okay, so we've got some skeletons on a capstan to paint. So it's time for everyone's favourite, Pale Sand. Alison Vassabar has done a super chat saying, Hey Johnny, thanks for the chill vibes today. Been having a rough day at work with my supervisor my mega micromanaging me today. Hope you're doing well. Um, thank you very much for the super chat. I'm doing all right, thank you. Uh, but I'm very sorry to hear about the micromanagement. There is little that... Excuse me. There's little that pisses me off more than people micromanaging. It's really just a nasty trait. Um, so I hope it eases up. Um over the, the rest of the day, and I hope you can rescue it um, from the clutches of a quite genuine grievance. Um, but yeah, thank you as ever for being in chat and uh, for the super chat and for the, for the nice words about the chill vibes. This is very kind. Okay, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, there's bits of metal I missed. <laughs> I'll just paint them rusty, it's fine. Severin Tiger says, people don't quit jobs, they quit managers. Wow, yeah. One of the jobs I quit certainly felt that way. That was a long time ago, though, so... Little skeleton ton 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 on the capstan there. Oh, so much to paint.
It's all going to be worth it. It's all going to be worth it when it's on the table and we're all playing Warcry and saying, oh, doesn't this look horrible? I will say yes and know that it was worth it. It's fine. Bits of that look bad, but oh well. In fairness, the instructions did say to paint this sort of capstan before um, gluing it on. Did I listen? No. There we go. Ooh. Defect, defect says no paint, no gain. Very good point. Ta -da. They're base coated. That'll do for now. Like I say, I've got to go back in and make all of the metal rusty, so I kind of don't want to do much more work on the skeletons until that's done. So I'll save these for like the last bit, but base coating them has been useful. So that'll do for now. So, yeah. In life, they drove this drive shaft. Now they do nothing, and the buckets have gone still, which is why they will be rusty once I have finished making them rusty. Oh, oi, 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 oi. So... I've done quite a bit in three hours, actually. We've done both of these. Done this big thing and this big thing. But that's not the last of the terrain. Not by a long shot. Let me show you. <laughs> There's just so much. There's like so much. So much. Right. Next big bit. If we do all the big bits, the smaller bits will be easier. These ones are just wood. They'll be dead quick. Eh? Actually, lots of the like, look at these bits. They're not too bad. Looks like Blight Town. Oh god, it's gonna feel like Blight Town by the end, I think. Okay. Yep, we're doing it. We'll do both of these at once. Okay, so we're back to where we were. It is time to dry brush some stuff. So we've got two identical big bits here. <laughs> Zega Genesis says, do I smell a stubborn project stream? It's too early for this to go on my stubborn project stream list because uh, this is currently just a project. I haven't stalled on this project yet. It, actually, my progress for me and terrain has been incredibly swift. Uh, thanks in no small part to um, my airbrush, but I've certainly not stalled yet. So here we go. Grumble just says, oh, hubris. Wow. Scott Hartman says, hey, Johnny, just said goodbye to my cat boxer after 19 years, and this is exactly what I need. Thanks for giving us a calm, safe space to be. Cheers. I'm so sorry to hear that, Scott. Um, I really appreciate the super chat, but that's got to be that's got to be difficult. Nineteen years is a long time to to you know have anything in your life, let alone a 
an, an animal. Um, like Boxer clearly had a great run. 19 years is, is a great innings for a cat, but you know that's just something people say to try and make themselves make themselves feel better about it as well as you. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm sorry that is really tough, but I hope things come good soon. Okay. Circles. Oh, it's quite nice to go back to dry brushing, actually, <laughs> after all of the metallic stuff. More paint. Dry brush, dry oh, there's a whole bloody skeleton here, look. It's chilling out. Doing Tim Curry's bit from Rocky Horror, practically. Jordan T says, I for sure thought you'd be done before I could make it back. Now nah, I'm streaming for another hour. If I can make it that long, I'm quite tired. But um, yeah, I generally stream four hours. So UK time, it's 4 to 8 p.m. You see the difference there in between the dry brush and see how this one's a little less flat than this one. Mary Chicky has done a super chat saying, just something as a thanks for the VODs. The audio often keeps me company as I drive for my delivery job. Great for reducing traffic-based frustration. I'm very glad, Mary. Um, drive safe as ever. Uh, but thank you. That's really, really kind. I'm um, glad you enjoy things. Uh, Defect says, so when is the first episode of Will It Hotas coming? I was thinking about that today, actually. I still need to um, try and get Dark Souls working with a Hotas. Uh... I thought I was going to be away this Thursday, so maybe this Thursday, if I can get it working, let's try and play Dark Souls and a Hotas. Why not? Why not? Four hours of Dark Souls and a Hotas. What could be better? Um, next Thursday, though, I'm very excited to say I'll be uh, playing Vermintide 2 with a very special guest, one uh, Sam Greer. Sam is um, a brilliant talent. She's been part of the UK games industry for a, a while, and her, her work is routinely great. Um... 
and turns out she bloody loves Vermintide, which I also love. So we thought, why don't we just jump on in together and play some Vermintide? So we will. Now, Alatho Rich says, what's Hotas? A Hotas is a hands-on throttle and stick. So if you imagine a joystick and a throttle, I'm going to try and get that working with Dark Souls. And then we're going to try and make our way through the Undead Berg like we're flying a plane. So, yeah. But um, I'll see if I can get that working for Thursday. Um, but, yeah, uh, the next Thursday, we're going to be killing a bunch of rats. Rat men in a video game, obviously. Um, I wouldn't kill a rat. I think they're really cute and lovely. Um, but we're going to be taking on some hordes of rat men in Vermintide 2. Don't miss it. Really looking forward to it, actually. I appeared on um, some of Sam's recent work. Um, she got me to play Metroid for the first time, and it was good fun. Um, so, yeah. Uh, looking forward to repaying the favour, basically. Okie dokie. Wood, 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 wood. Dry brush, dry brush, dry brush, dry brush. That's both of them done, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Now we switch to cream. Jack Wood says, rat men? There's no such thing as rat men. Oh, here we go. They're real Jack Wood. Come on. Fallon Duck says, what are you getting? Verpal, Win Wing, X56? Are these all Hotasses? Hotai? I've got a Thrustmaster something. Uh, quite a basic hotas, but it works. Nathan Morganson says, you must have seen some tiny beast men and gotten confused. How dare you? I mean, beast men are actually in Vermintide too. How dare you tell me the rat men don't exist? Wake up, people. Oh, Anonymous says specifically a hands-on throttle and stick means all the controls are on the throttle and stick so you never need to take your hands off them. It's used in real life fighters as well. Well, well, well. Laura B says hello everyone, don't mind me while I lurk as I study. Hello Laura, I hope the studying goes well. Uh, all of you are just beastmen apologists, funny looking beastmen, honestly. One day they'll pop up and I'll be proved right and you'll all see. And I won't be laughing because everyone's going to be too busy getting munched. So there. We do have fun, don't we? Right. I'm back in with the... I'm going to try and do this very gently. There you go. So there's how that looks now versus that. Dry brushing. Good luck or a quick death has done a super chat saying nothing. Just coming in, dropping some some cash and some good vibes, and uh, going away silently. Thank you, good luck for a quick death. That is very kind. I hope you are well. I am mostly fine. I'm pushing myself to the limits of human endurance by painting terrain. <laughs> Which I haven't done in a long time, and I'd forgotten how... Um, laborious it can be to be honest but it'll be worth it when it looks nice and is good so there yeah it's been more than a year since I last painted terrain however that was also really quick because I just did it all with spray cans and then a very quick dry brush so 
Oh, as the crow flies says, hey, Johnny, you inspired me to get my first tattoo. I got it last week and it's healing nicely. I'm very happy of it. Wonderful. R- very happy with it. That's great news. I hope I hope you had a, a lovely artist and it made you feel all safe and uh, you just had a really positive experience because I really love getting... I love getting tattooed as much as I love having tattoos, really. Like, it can be a really special experience Like, and it can just be really nice and fun and chill. Like, the artist that's done a lot of mine, we get on really well. It's just, like, it's just fun, just hanging out. Um, the science boy says, is good luck or a quick death related to Rita or a quick death? <laughs> good Lord. Um, Tanvir Panasol says, do you read fantasy and have you read The Wheel of Time? I do read fantasy. I read quite a bit of fantasy. I've never read The Wheel of Time because there are, what, 15, 14, 15 books? Um, so it kind of, that feels like a big undertaking. Although I did read like 11 of Robin Hobb's books in the same series before I eventually got fed up and stopped. So like, it's not out of the realm of possibility, but I've certainly not started. Um, if you are a Wheel of Time fan, I'm I'm sorry to hear that apparently the TV show is not great, uh, at least so far. Hopefully it'll improve because I know it's a really beloved series. And so you don't deserve to have a terrible time watching it Zega Genesis stop stop it has done a super chat saying if you're not having a good time doing that I'm not just upping and playing Hades Zega Genesis I want to finish this terrain also I, I don't think I've got Hades installed on this computer right now because I had to free up some space recently and I hadn't played it in a while because I play it on the Switch mostly um Dry brush it, check it and see. I got a dry brush and my name is Johnny. Dry brush it, I dry brush it. Uh, yes, I've done that one as well. Kalu Kale. Back to silver. <laughs> the dry brushing was such a nice holiday, but it was so, so brief. Neko the Kitty says, my book club just finished Gideon the Ninth and couldn't agree if it was a sci-fi or a fantasy. Johnny, have you read or do you have an opinion? I have read Gideon the Ninth. Um, I think it I think it comfortably straddles the line between both. I do. Um, certainly Harrow the Ninth, which is the second book, is feels a lot, a lot more like fantasy. But because, because sort of so much of the the events in Canaan House in Gideon the Ninth are explored scientifically, it's difficult to say. It's it's both. I think it can be both. You know, or what do people call it? Speculative fiction. There's also that. But um, but yeah. Tom Chapman says, I only got through the initial Farseer trilogy with Hob. I, you know what? You've, you've done the best bits. The, um, the Life Ship trilogy is great. Not without its problems, but it is very good. And then what's next? Um, the Tawny Man series is difficult. It's quite controversial at points. There's some sort of fits, ex- exhibits some weird, weird homophobia out of nowhere. And it's really disappointing, really disappointing, and badly handled. Um, hang on, Robin Hobb, book in order. Um, so yeah, I've done the life trilogy. Fool's errand. Is Fool's errand the tawny man? I didn't do Fitz and the Fool. I did do the Tawny Man series, which is it, it's it's good, but I, I wouldn't recommend it just because it has some really clumsy stuff around sex in it. Um, and I got I got bored during the the Dragon Keeper series. I just got bored of fucking dragons. <laughs> just got bored of dragons. So 
The Science Boys, so since we're all asking about books, have you read the Broken Earth series by uh, J.K. Jemison? Isn't it N.K. Jemison? I've read the first one, and I didn't really get on with it very much. I want to go back to it, because I've had so, so, so many people recommend it to me again. And so many people I know absolutely love it. I wonder, like, if I, you know, I feel like I should just give it another go. Um, but yeah, I didn't didn't like it, really. Um, I didn't I just didn't like the main characters very much. I didn't really engage with them, even when I was meant to find them likable or when I, um, you know. Um, Yasmin Wari says, how could one get bored of dragons? I just think they're boring. <laughs> I think they're really fucking obvious. They've just been done to death, and I'm sick of hearing about how majestic they are. Because, like, right. In books, it's like, oh, the, the dragon was there and it was so majestic. And everyone rushed forward to say, dragon, my my liege, I am greeting you properly so that you do not incinerate my home. You are wonderful. And the dragon is like, yes, I am. Ba, 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 ba. And basically, it just feels like I've spent hundreds of hours being told how great dragons are. And there's very little they do that's actually any fucking good. Like, I, I, when I say any good, I mean, like, much cop. I just... I just, I just fucking bored of them. Um, I don't find them interesting as antagonists or as sort of, like, incidental characters or anything. I just find them fucking dull. Um, I liked smacking the shit out of them in Skyrim, but they were actually doing something then. Um, and... The Dragon Keeper series uh, from Robin Hobb just disappears so far up Dragon's backsides. So I was like, you know what? I am done. The one exception, maybe, is Discworld. Because they just explode all the time, and that's funny. But, uh, I just. Oh, dragons are so amazing. They're shit. There we go. I have quite strong opinions about dragons, you may have noticed. You may wonder how I've read so much Robin Hobb if I've got such a problem with dragons. But sometimes we do things that don't make a whole bunch of sense. And that is one of them. Okay. Toreador the Explorador says, come for the painting, stay for the hot takes on dragons. What can I say? Davy Jones says, nice to meet someone who shares my opinion on dragons. Excellent. I mean, I'm guilty of perpetuating it. I put a dragon in the Oxventure and it was like, why do you disturb my slumber? I'm so mighty. But, you know... People expect that sort of thing from dragons. I just want a dragon that's a pest that's like... He's like, go on, go on, stand us a drink, go on, go on. Like... I want I want a dragon that's just a weird rust about. He's like the annoying hanger-on character that happens to be an entire dragon. It's fed up with the, majest like, the majesty of them. I'll stop banging on about it now, but... And then there was our dragon. Oh, fucking hell.
David Story says, hi again, I was wondering if you gave Lost in Random a look yet, because I uh, thought you might like it because it has a sort of Burton game and art style. I haven't yet, sorry. Things have been very intense here recently. Things have been a lot, uh, and I've just not had much time to sort of explore new things lately. Getting there slowly. New motto this stream. <laughs> T-Bid says, you know they'd have the same personalities as IRL billionaires clinging onto their treasure hoards and pretending to be important. Right? The treasure hoard doesn't... You know, a dragon's treasure hoard only gains value when the dragon is dead. That's it. It's inert. All it does is add a, a, a mystique to the area. But people are trying to beware the dragon. They're trying to stay away from the fucker. There's another bit of sprue I didn't cut off. Brilliant. God, I'm actually going to have to cut that bit off. We'll just twist it out, maybe. Yep, that'll go. I checked and rechecked these as well. Oh, shit. Come on, you little bastard. There we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Ah. JT has done a super chat saying, I arrive, I leave, I arrive again, then leave again. I can't tell if you sound more like Zorro or a cat. <laughs> Emma Blast says, D dragons don't participate in commerce. Why do they need the shinies? Mm -hmm. Wankers. They're self-important and they don't really contribute to society. There we go. Look, I, I said it. Beowulf should have known better than to take that fight. There, I said it. Should have sent someone else in. Bloody old, old spear dang bastard. Okay, so I've done this corner. Oh, no, I haven't. <laughs> nearly, nearly. Okay, so I've done this corner now. No, I haven't. yes, I have I've done this corner. Now I just need to do this corner and then the other two corners. Hermit Prime says, are we talking about dragons or billionaires? Both. I'll tell you what, Shadowrun, actually. It's got dragons that run corporations. They're pretty fun. I still rather they weren't fucking dragons, but you know, they're a dragon businessman in Shadowrun.
Mm-mm-mm-mm. Sorry, my brain, my, my brain, my my brain, my mind went completely blank for a couple of minutes there. I have become one with the terrain. My life is now just painting silver onto bits of metal in the terrain. And ever shall it be thus. Oi, oi, oi. Maybe this will end up on the Stubborn Project stream. <laughs> no, that'll be fine. I'm going to stop at 8 o'clock, which is in 37 minutes. I'm going to make a bolognese. I'm going to eat that for dinner. Have a nice chilled time. Stop telling me to play Hades, Zega Genesis. This isn't a Hades stream. Stop it. Ugh. So has anyone seen Eternals in the cinema? I heard it's shit. <laughs> Apparently it's very long and very bad. Can anyone confirm? I saw the trailer and it was like, hmm? I'm sure some people out there will enjoy it and it seems to have performed well as these things tend to do, but... Just curious. Okay, so I've done this corner. I think I've done this corner. Yes, I have. Oh, no, wait, there's a little bit more to do. Corey Haynes says, Hey, Johnny, have you played the new Forza? I don't like driving games much, but it's still great. They've they've taken a major step in inclusivity this year with non-binary pronouns and options for prosthetics. I have been playing Forza 5. It's really good. Um, I can't drive in real life, and I don't care about racing games, but it is a hoot. Um, it actually meant a lot to me to be able to pick they, them pronouns and have the game, you know, consistently be using them. Uh, the cars are really fun. I've got a little teeny tiny car that I uh, painted up to look like Finding Nemo. Or just Nemo, I guess. And then I paid 100,000 credits to download someone else's tuning blueprint and now it goes like 250 miles an hour and is nigh on undrivable and I love it but last night I was in a convoy of like five people me yeah five people and we were just bombing around doing races and smashing into each other just having a great time it's brilliant um I'll probably stream it maybe I'll stream it on Thursday um, I don't know if I'm ready for Hotas Dark Souls if I'm perfectly honest Emma Benton says Johnny have you downloaded the Kirby car not the Kirby car I think my I think it might be the same car as the Nemo car I have. I'll look for the Kirby car. To be honest, okay, so Thursday, I'll probably end up doing Forza and just driving around because I think that would be chill. And I don't know if I'm in the right place right now to do Dark Souls and a Hotas. I want to do it right. So I'll I'll make my mind up. But yeah. Um yeah, Forza Forza's brilliant, turns out. Driving games, who knew? Um, 
I especially like the off-road downhill stuff because I just like any game that you can drift in and I'm very good at drifting in my Jurassic Park car, which is nice. Although the game was tried to tear me a new one the other day. I lost a race and it was like, oh, you've lost some races now. Do you want to drop to novice difficulty? And I said no. Uh, and then I won several races in a row in my drifty Jurassic Park car. So fuck them. Also, uh, I unlocked an, uh, a, uh, a horn, which is the Windows 10 alert noise, which is an irresponsible thing to have in that game. I keep driving around going, boo -de -de -doom. it's very funny. Uh, so yeah, all in all, top racing game would play again. Possibly will live on the internet this week. Just drive around, make all of the cars look silly. I've got another car that's got a KFC livery. With the kernel plastered on the side. Plastered? Plastered on the side. <sighs> oh good, Emma Benton liked Eternals. I'm glad someone did. Sorry, I kind of I suggested a topic of conversation and then immediately jumped off it. Uh, la 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 la. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Sorry, just checking my... Um... Do 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 do. Checking my email very quickly because I was expecting an email from someone. Do, 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 do. Nick Jeffrey's done another super chat saying, caught up with the end of your zoo stream on Thursday, you were needing a different type of zookeeper. Made me wonder, did you not have a breeding pair? Thankfully, I think even that game doesn't go so far as to get you breeding humans. <laughs> but in fairness to you, Nick, I didn't check. Maybe I should go back and see... I found that whole task very weird. It's going to wait until I accidentally do it organically, really, rather than trying to engineer the workforce. Because so I felt awful when I hired someone and then realised I didn't need them and they also hadn't helped me in my quest, so I just fired them? Didn't feel nice. <gasps> Rudy Gerber says, I have an aerial atom painted like Luigi's car in Mario Kart. Yes, please! Oh, bloody lovely Forza. What a, what a treat. It's made me want to try Forza 4, because I know that's set in the UK. I kind of want to bomb through a bunch of dry stone walls. Um, although, in real life, if you crashed a car into those, the wall would be absolutely fine. Those things are so sturdy. Are you kidding me? Lovely Forza. Des, aka Dreadpool91, says, I really liked that stream. Any chance we will get more? Do you mean let's build a zoo? Yeah, maybe. I don't see, I don't see why not. It was a giggle. Um, I liked the giving chat control of uh, the decisions. I think we can do that with some more games as well. Um, I think it would be good. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And I'm still amazed that chat didn't go for all of the most immoral things they possibly could. It was nice. You know, the animal welfare was rated excellent because we were feeding the animals so well. Our hot dogs were more prime, prime beef than anything else. We were a very nice, we were a very nice zoo. Carl Merseka says, Johnny, haven't been keeping up with stuff. Are you still at Dicebreaker? No, I am not still at Dicebreaker. I quit in March of this year uh, and I launched this channel in April. Uh, so I've launched a Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini. Uh, and there I do video game Let's Play, play series. I put out uh, pen and paper role playing games and... Um, the cooking show that I did at Eurogamer is back, although I'm behind schedule on that one. Um, there's all sorts there, and there's a lovely Discord community for you to be a part of. So, uh, no, I, I handed over the reins of the uh, Dicebreaker YouTube channel to Wheels, and I went on my merry way. And you know what? It was the best decision I think I've ever made. I'm having a great time. Uh, it is a good. So, yeah. Hello. Hello. 
Um, da, da. It also explains why I'm painting Warhammer on my own channel, because uh, Dicebreaker, I wasn't allowed to do tabletop coverage that wasn't for Dicebreaker. It's a standard part of the contract, but yeah. And Kellogg Fergus says, wait, was that this year? Oh, I've lost all sense of time. I know, right? Yeah, I've been going since April of this year. So, yeah. Ah, oh, Carl says, I saw your Dishonored stream and your Let's Make a Zoo stream. It was very enjoyable. I've been following you since GameSpot. Whoa, whoa, that was a long time ago. I, I, yeah, that was nine, eight, nine years now. Oh. Benny says, Johnny, where would you want Horizon 6 to be set? I'm thinking Japan would be fun due to the terrain and countryside plus the sprawling city of Tokyo. That's that's a good shout, actually. Um, oh, God, yeah, that'd be really good fun. He he, Spoon of Dune says, Hey, Johnny, I saw your Elite Dangerous stream the other week. You made me buy a Hotas. Welcome aboard. They're just really fun. Lovely space trucking. Might do a bit more of that again soon, actually. It's just very chilled. Um... And I am tired. I'm taking care of myself, don't worry. But uh, it's, yeah, all is well. But any excuse to boot up the friendship drive, to be honest. Although somebody in the comments was like, ah, uh, tries to tear me a new one because I dared to call it the friendship drive, not the frame shift drive. Severin Tiger says, Hotess, uh, hands on throttle and stick. So, like, flight stick and. This is great fun. It's a nice way of controlling it, and it feels more like you're flying a spaceship. Whew. It's a lot. It's a lot to paint. Cool thing happened uh, over the weekend, though. I was talking to my friend um, who wants to borrow, borrow? Wants to borrow one of my Blood Bowl teams in our upcoming League Christmas Cup. We're having a one-day tournament. And he's decided he wants to play my Nurgle team, which I have finished painting, but hadn't yet based. And I was like, oh, I've still got to base them. I like, Stupid basing. I don't like basing. And he went, I'll do it. And I've said, all right. So I've got out of basing my entire team. Uh, and he gets to borrow them for the Christmas tournament, which is great. Very pleased with that. Because um, I just, I'm not good at basing. I don't especially enjoy basing. But uh, he is good at basing and he does enjoy it so everyone's a winner there frankly I'm trying to learn to love basing but to be honest nah Oh, Des, a Des, aka Dreadpool91, says, Johnny, I had a thought about your glue problem. Ever tried nail polish remover to weaken the seal around the lid to get at that glue that's not yet dry? That's a good point. Um, I haven't tried that, actually. I do have a big bottle of acetone to make sprue goo with. Um, so maybe I'll give it a go. Although I do now have some super glue again. So I bought, I bought a little pot. So I'm not... It's not an... Excuse me, it's not an emergency, but um, that's a good idea, actually. I'll show you the sprue goo I made. It's very weird stuff. It's brilliant for fixing mistakes and filling gaps and stuff in uh, models. 
but um, oh, cheerful spider's done a uh, hey, hey, cheerful spider's done a super chat saying, Johnny, I'm shocked to hear you've been free basing. <laughs> Jack Wood says basing is only fun on big models where you can do ridiculous stuff like put down a carpet of 300 skulls. I did that. I did that for for my vermin lord, which is over there. Uh, Mini Mooch says, yeah, what is basing? It is literally the base of a model is making the base look nice. So these are just like toppers that I bought. So you peeled them off a, off a sheet and stuck them down. But this model is now based because it has a base that has stuff on it. Um... But I just hate that process. It's really annoying. Um, but um, oh, oh, oh. so this I haven't used any of it yet, and it's and it, the water's well, the acetone's got an alarming shade of blue. But this is sprue goo. This is basically offcuts of of models like this, dumped in nail varnish remover, which you're not supposed to do because it melts them. Uh, and so this is all melted. This is all, this is all plastic, like this is, but it's melted. Um, so it's like a kind of putty, and you can use it with uh, gloves to kind of. Um, you can uh, use it with gloves to kind of like fix mistakes in your models and sculpt new stuff, and then you just leave it for the acetone to evaporate, and uh, it it. It's fine then. It just goes solid. So it's it's good stuff. I've not used it yet, but I'm quite excited about it. I just realised this is an old jalapeno jar, and there were a few jalapeno seeds in the bottom when I put all the stuff in, and they've slowly drifted their way through. I just had one erupt from the surface, and now it's kind of floating about there. Fascinating. Jack Wood says, holy shit, that's a lot of sprues. This was five of the seven sprues that came with um red harvest there's an absolutely massive seven sprue box of terrain there's so much terrain but yeah it's good fun i'm looking forward to using it for things tom chapman has done a super chat saying hey johnny do you enjoy musicals and if so any favorites been on a real musical kick myself recently um i like them uh, I'm not, I'm not sort of fanatic about them, but I do, I do really enjoy them. Like my mum is, is really into musicals. So I've seen quite a few in London. I'd say my favourite is Matilda. Um, cause I think Tim Minchin's work on that was just absolutely brilliant writing all the songs. Like when I grow up is such a great song. Um, and, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed going to see that. Um, I've seen the Lion King a lot as well. It's sort of my parents really... My mum loves going to musicals and she really loves The Lion King, so I've seen that a fair few times now. But, um, yeah, like I don't feel any great rush to watch Hamilton, for example, like or any any musical, but I enjoy them when I'm there. So. Silver, 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 paint, paint, paint. <sighs> oh, I really enjoyed watching um, some of the footage from the Spider-Man <laughs> musical that you two made because it seemed fucking dire. Uh, and I don't like you two. I think Bono's a prick. So that was fun. That made me happy. But I don't, I don't know if that really counts as enjoying a musical. That's more just schadenfreude, isn't it? But uh, I, I had a great time watching it, so... Like the baffling scene where they introduce all of the fucking villains. That's great. Severin Tiger has done a super sticker of uh, a cat that appears to be screaming. It's just like... Ah! Thank you very much. This is quite a cursed sticker, but I kind of love it. Um, it's very, very, very evocative, I would say. If it sounds like I'm trying to be polite about the cat, it's because I am. Uh, it's unnerving, but in a fun way? That that sounded a bit better, didn't it? 
Um, okay. Where was the bit I was painting before? Was it around here? Yes. There we go. There's some. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh god, oh god, oh god. No, it's okay. Benny's gonna try and play four to five with a nineteen uh, nineties Hotas. Go on, Benny. Let me know how it goes. Maybe we will have a Hotas stream on Thursday after all, who knows? The thing about um, Horizon or Forza is that it um, it pulls in when you're racing in solo mode. It it basically pulls in friends from your friends list and gives them driver tars that you race against, which is actually a really good way of keeping me engaged because I keep being like, oh fucking, oh my friend Matt, you know, I just can't beat him. His stupid driver tar. Um, but a lot of games journalists are on my list, and you know what? Aoife Wilson's driver tar is rude. I I already texted her this, but wow. That automated car with her name on it has got some nerve. Cut me up something rotten the other day. I actually I got my phone out and texting, your driver tar is rude. Bratz has given me some grief as well. Although, routinely, um, Matt Reynolds, the guy's editor at Eurogamer, his 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 driver tar is like way out in the lead. It's ridiculous. Zegi Genesis says, I'm being so good, Johnny. I know you are. I know you want to tell me to play Hades. I'm, re I'm genuinely impressed with your um forbearance there. Oh wow, there's just so much of this to do. I'm getting quite clumsy with it as well. That's fine. It's fine. It's meant to look a bit slapdash. It's all going to be rusty. It's going to be fine. Nathan Wilkinson says, Are you surprised? You know, that's exactly what Aoife texts back. I'm not joking. So, there we go. Fucking. There's just... Some driver tiles have, you know... They're just rude. This is rude. Okay, all right. Oh, okay. We can do this, we can do this. There's not much left to do on this one. I'm going to leave the other one for another day. But we can do this, we can do this. Hotas Hades. Benny42 says, Johnny, what card did you pick first? I don't even remember. It just gave me the tutorial thing, and then I was like, eh, car. I know nothing about cars, so. I just know which ones I have that are fast, and I know the Jurassic Park car I have is my favourite car because it's good for drift, but also fast, and it handles well. Um... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a whole whole fucking load of metal I did not paint there. I can do this, I can do this. I can get this piece done in 15.
Jedediah Taylor says, It's fine, Johnny. I worked with 30-year veteran auto repair mechanics that know nothing about cars. How does that work? I mean, I, I know about video editing. That's why I do it as my job. If I didn't, then I'd be surprised that I'd got even this far, let alone 30 years of it. Thirty years, well, knowing nothing about cars, that's impressive, really. Because, I mean, you, you get 20 years in, why bother learning, actually? It's like, eh, this is working fine, let's do another 10. Easy. No one's caught me yet, no one's checked in, so... Later Cater says, is stream going late or am I awake very early? Either way, glad to be here. The stream is normal time for me, and it's not going late. So could this be a daylight savings change? Or are you actually up early? Who knows? It is very weird that we do daylight savings still. I think it's stupid. And uh, it turns out the answer is capitalism. That's all. We are getting there. Got to do these bits. So this leg. Inside of that bit. Yeah, we're nearly done. Great. Ugh. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. We can do this. And Kellek Fergic says, gotta go. Thanks for a chill time, Johnny. My pleasure. Um, nice to see you as always. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day. Um, I've been going for another 10 minutes anyway, and then we shall stop and all get on with our lives until Thursday, when I'll be back either playing Forza or playing Dark Souls in the Hotas. <laughs> Probably it's going to be Forza, let's face facts. Because um, I just feel like I need a good run-up at doing Dark Souls and the Hotas. We'll see. We shall see. Oh, you know what? It's painting all of this detailing has been a slog. But as I suspected, I'm really glad I did it because that is three of the four biggest terrain pieces in this whole box done. Well, not done, done, but um, in a state of very near completion. I just need to slap the rust effect on it and then pair it back a little bit. So that is a pretty good day's work. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You need painting, do you? Of course you do, you cheeky bit of metal. Jordan T says, what's a HOTAS? Uh, HOTAS is a hands-on throttle and stick. It's like a flight stick for flight simulators and stuff. Dr. Brangle says, did you see the guy who beat Dark Souls 3 with Morse code? No, what? How does that even work? Was it just a series of telegrams saying, here's my attack? That's ridiculous. Oh, okay. There's all, oh, you cheeky bit of metal. There's always a bit more hiding, isn't there? Can't wait till I stop talking at this piece of plastic like it is a 
sentient and B trying to make a fool of me. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. That's all the metal done. Oh, goodness. Oh. He learned Morse code, rigged up a system for it. Like dot dash dot was roll or such. That's amazing. That's incredible. Carl says, can the chat fill me in? Is Hotas a Twitch fad or something? If it is, I'm not aware of it. Um, uh, basically, I um, did a stream of uh, Elite Dangerous recently and I was messing around with the, um, <laughs> the flight stick. And we just started talking about what other games we could play with one. And we were like, oh, I wonder if this will work. So I've tried to play Dishonored 2 with a Hotas, but it won't even let me. Um, won't even let me try. Um, I might need to find a remapping software. But yeah, we're going to try Dark Souls just with a flight stick. Cause it'd be, be fun. Bit of fun. Um, all right. So I'm calling them. There are some bits on the underside I could do, but I won't. Um, I'm calling the metals on this done, which means we've done this piece. This piece. Oh. Goodness me, I'm tired. And this honking great piece on today's stream. So, like I say, I'm going to do a rust effect on this lot. And it'll all be lovely. But until then... Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of work. I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, so, I'm going to wrap up the stream there. Five minutes before I normally end. But you know what? I think it is time. Um, I'm going to have another yawn. Excuse me, this is rude. Oi, 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 oi. Oh, God. Big old stretch. Oh, that was a lot. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed this stream. Um, I'll be back on Thursday. I will be, uh, like I say, uh, either playing... F I'll probably be playing Forza. Um, but I will keep you updated. I'm on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash John there, J O H W N E H. Or, if you are part of the Patreon, you get access to the Discord. Uh, and there's an announcements channel in that, where I put out announcements about what's coming up. Oh, goodness me, so you never miss a thing. Um, it's been very, very good fun, but I'm going to go now. Um, so, yeah, Emma Benton's just put a, um, a link to the Patreon in the chat. But um, thank you all so much for watching. There's loads more on the channel for you to watch. Um, just go explore it if you if you uh, would be so kind. If you could also drop a like on uh, your way out of the stream, it would be great because it kind of boosts these uh, streams in YouTube's algorithm and helps us find lots more lovely skeleton pals and we can grow the nice, nice community that we are growing here. So, um, yeah. Oh, no, here we go again. I'm going to get some sleep. I'm going to make some dinner and I'm going to get some sleep. Um, I'll catch you later this week. Uh, lots of love to you all. Take care. And uh, thank you again for watching. Have a lovely day.